2023 wasn't a good year for the Carolina Panthers, but I'm trying to make 2024 a better one for myself. Get started on your resolutions with Factor so you're ready for the new year. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including keto options, calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Skip that overpriced takeout trap. Factor is cheaper and way more delicious than takeout. Get chef-crafted, restaurant-quality meals delivered right to your door, and they're ready to heat and eat in just two minutes, which means more time for you. Head to factormeals.com slash C350 and use the promo code C350 to get 50% off. That's code C350 at factormeals.com slash C350 to get 50% off. Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. You could turn $10 into $250. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com/fan and use code FAN. That's code FAN at prizepicks.com/fan. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details. In a world where Carolina Panthers fans have an insatiable thirst for Panthers news and opinions, only one podcast roars ferociously. It's the C3 Panthers podcast. What's the deal, Panther fans? It's your boy, the professor. Okay, hey, Tony Dunn. It's the C3 Panthers podcast. It's Tuesday night. It's nine o'clock. And guess what? It's the longest running Panthers podcast where fans come together and chop up the latest news and opinions and moan, be moan, be happy, be optimistic, be pe- pessimistic about our favorite team, the Carolina Panthers. You can be a part of the show. The number is 252-228-5098. Um, and there's a lot to talk Well, no, there's not a lot to talk about tonight, actually. There are some things to talk about, which is crazy. That means we'll probably go seven hours. Tonight's show, multiple teams interested in trading for Carolina's number eight NFL draft pick. Teams are interested in R8, and it may be interesting to our GM, Scott Fitterer. The Carolina Panthers continue to fill in the gaps in free agency by signing defensive tackle Daquan Jones. We'll talk about that signing and the impact uh, going forward in a draft where is very thin at defensive tackle. Maybe an important move right before the draft to help us. We're going to have a mock draft tonight, hopefully. And your cat calls, the numbers 252-228-5098. Smash the thumbs up button. Be a part of the show. And don't forget, it's a special. It's like a it's a, it's a 420 episode tonight. Hey. Hey. And I got my boy, Cody Lashley, in the house. My man, my co-pilot, the producer of the C3 Panthers podcast. You know, I was looking at this, man. I was going back. And looking at some of the old uh, draft parties, but not to mention, we're having a live draft party next Thursday. Uh, it will be the eighth or ninth. But I went back and I watched the first one, 2014, and I think that's when you called in. It was either that or twelve. I, I, I actually, it might not have been that show. There was a show I was watching in the draft party. You called in live. Maybe it was it was a lot later. It was like 2016, but still, it was awesome hearing a baby Cody Lashney <laughs> calls, dude. And now he's the star of the show. Welcome back, hey man. Yeah, happy 420 to you and to everyone out there in Panther family. Uh, yeah, that was my first appearance on the C3 podcast on video was in 2018 when we drafted DJ Moore. So, 
Yeah, we've been a big happy Panther family ever since. And uh, listen, the Panthers have done some weird things. The draft is right around the corner. Everybody's pumped for it. There's new rumors that apparently the Panthers are already looking to trade out of the eighth spot. Man, there's so much to talk about. There's so much Panther news to get to. We just signed a brand new defensive tackle that has everybody talking. But Tony, you know that we're going to do it with the best Panther fans in all of YouTube. Supreme leaders in the building, CJA, Matt Knows Nothing, Grim Reaper, Blake Bettis, Lynn Leon Hart, Chuck from Elizabeth City, That Man Tin Tizzy, Tony Dunn, and nothing to it but to do it, brother. Let's roll. Rack them up. Man, we got CK in the house, too. Welcome to the show, my master of streams and uh, the master of manipulating the internet, the video conferencing of the world. How are you, CK? <laughs> Man, uh, living the dream. dream. You know, you know. Listen, it's uh, it's April. Things are starting to warm up a little bit. It's nice to be able to have everything moving towards football. Hopefully, being exciting again. Um, and I think it's going to be fun to talk about the what we've seen so far in the off season with the draft right around the corner here. The number is 252-228-5098. You can be a part of the longest-running Panthers podcast. We want to hear your voice, your opinion on what is going on in free agency, what we should do in the NFL draft, and anything else you want to talk about when it comes to the Carolina Panthers. Let's jump right into it, fellas. Uh, right now, the I guess the major news is just this, is that the Carolina Panthers have been contacted by multiple uh, teams in um, – in, in hopes of maybe securing their number eighth overall pick. This is reported by Adam Schefter, I believe. And it says, let me see. I actually can get, hopefully I can get the tweet up. Adam Schefter reports Carolina Panthers have had conversation with conversations with other teams about potentially trading back in the draft from pick number eight per source. So Adam Schefter Per sourced it. This is an interesting way. I thought he was the source. Anyway, there are all sorts of ongoing trade conversations between teams. Let's see what next week brings. Adam Schefter reporting that Carolina Panthers could be dealing back from eight. And guys, we went on a round table when it came to a super YouTube creator podcast segment with Panther Nation podcast. Cody, um, when we were going through this giant podcast and mock draft and you hear pot potential rumors that Carolina could trade back, excited, uh, interested, intrigued, or not interested? Well, interested for the simple reason that I feel like in the past few months, Scott Federer has really done a ton of good work. And I think today's free agent signing, which we'll get here to in a minute, um, is further uh, a continuation of that good work. So if I look at everything that he's been able to do in a short amount of time, we all have reason to be optimistic about Sam Darnold. We're not desperate for a quarterback like we were before. Tony, we've been saying that we're in a really good position to just go best player available. And even if we didn't have the draft right now, we would at least be able to feel a competitive football team. Um, and I think with that said, um, knowing that we might be interested in maybe gaining another first round pick next year and moving back a little bit, it might not be a bad move, but at the same time, it might be prudent just to sit there and take the best corner available like JC Horn or maybe Rashawn Slater the left tackle from Northwestern that we've been talking about for so much to protect his blind side uh, here in Carolina. So um, we really have every option open to us at this point in time. Um, however, I'm still not entirely sold on the fact that the Panthers aren't in the quarterback market in the draft. I know we all kind of think that we're not, and I'm not even saying that I'm going to put money on that we will draft a quarterback. What I am saying is that depending on how the board falls, if the Panthers are in love with Justin Fields and he ends up being there with the eighth overall pick, we might still do that. 
Um, but even if we're not interested in a quarterback, it benefits us to have other teams think that we are interested because then other teams want to move up ahead of us to make sure they have their shot at their preferred pocket passer. So right now the Panthers are in a pretty damn good situation um, if this is or isn't true. When we look at what's been going on with the draft and I guess the speculation trading up, trading back, sitting pat, it all comes down to what's going to happen at the quarterback position, right? I mean, like that's what we're all anxious to see is if uh, there are four quarterbacks in four or are there four quarterbacks in six picks or there are four quarterbacks in eight picks. And that will be the determinant, I think, a lot of how Carolina manipulates the draft now. We were part of this giant mock draft, Cody. And just to continue on that, is that right around the time that the Carolina Panthers were ready to pick a a trade offer had came in several trade offers, and this these are all mock, these are all fictitious, right? But they're hypothetical, I guess. My question to you before we move on is. If the Carolina Panthers, if if the quarterbacks are gone, right? So let's just take the quarterback position out of the equation because we could argue for the next hour about whether or not we should pick a quarterback where we shouldn't, right? Say the the quarterbacks, the top four are gone, and you're sitting there, Penny Sewell is also gone, right? True. <laughs> Poor little CK. He's trying to jump above little Joey. Little Joey the Blind Panther, he can't see. How about that? Two people can't see. Oh, um, so when if you <laughs> are to trade back, how about this? Is that my, my kind of issue or my question to you is what changes if the Carolina Panthers are picking inside or outside the top 10? Right, because that's the, the thing is that, yes, we can, we're going to get multiple picks. We can debate about how many picks we're going to get and what that difference is. But what are we looking at if we're picking at eight and if we're picking at 14 or 13? What's the difference? Well, it, it personally just depends. <coughs> um, I, I, it depends on where we're looking to trade back to. If we're trading back to, say, 13 with the Chargers or 15 with the Patriots, then, yeah, I do think there's a really good chance that we're still going to be able to land a high-quality player like a Christian Derrishaw, like a J.C. Horn uh, mentioned earlier, maybe a Caleb Farley, um, who according to many is the best corner in this whole draft, uh, but he's fallen due to some injury concerns. Um, I really love J.C. Horn, who I've done a film room on on this very channel, cornerback from uh, South Carolina, and I, I think that would be another player that would really, uh, you know, I would love to have on this football team. But I remember what Scott Fitterer said in his opening press conference as the GM for the Panthers, and that, you know, if you're not picking in the first 19 picks, they really don't see the difference in the top, you know, the the bottom 20 picks to the top of the, of the second round. Yeah. They kind of value all those players around the same. So, um, you know, I do know that Matt Rule and Scott Fitterer both really love the talent in the first three rounds of this year's draft. Um, and I do think that they would covet having a number of different picks, uh, especially if they feel like they're still building this team for the future. Um, and if they're, you know, sold on Sam Darnold, then yeah, this might be the perfect thing for us. Um, it, again, if it's too far back, then I, I kind of, I kind of don't see the Panthers wanting to dip that far outside of the premium talent of the first round. CK, that you hear this about the Carolina Panthers having options of trading back. Well, we've been talking about trading up for so long in in this show. Yeah. Cody's been banging that drum till we're all deaf, right, about the need for the quarterback, Mm -hmm. quarterback. But things have changed. When it comes to the addition of Sam Darnold and now in many ways, what we've done in free agency, which Cody and myself have all celebrated and setting us up for BPA. What are your thoughts on um, trading back? Is this something that the Carolina Panthers 
are you interested in this? I feel like every year I hear a trade back, trade back, trade back, and then nothing, you know, we don't ever see it, any of that. Your thoughts on moving from eight back, Do you are you a little disappointed you don't get the blue chip player? Are you I'll, settling? Or are you excited for adding picks? So a couple of things. I think we start to get here the trade back, trade back, when the things that we have that are an opportunity are not going to be necessarily there. Like last year, it was, I mean, Isaiah Simmons isn't probably going to be there, even though he was. You know, all these pieces that we wanted were probably going to be off of the board. So let's trade back because there wasn't anything as exciting as, you know, a, a linebacker like Isaiah Simmons or uh, a quarterback like Joe Burrow um, or even this year, uh, uh, you know, the quarterback that they have or a Kyle Pitts. I mean, all of these, there's so many great players. Like the idea of having them all be gone by the time it hits eight, would you rather have more picks or uh, have, you know, somebody who you didn't necessarily want, like initially that could still help the team, but maybe you could have gotten them at 15 instead, you know? And mm. so there's, I, I think there's always going to be that, 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 that teeter totter. I don't hate the idea of moving back mainly because I think we've put a lot of stock in the fact that Scott Fitterer is a better GM than, uh, than, uh, than Marty Herney. But, if he has more draft picks, if we really believe that, then we're going to have an opportunity to see more impactful players on this team if he has an opportunity to pick the guys that he wants. You know, if he only has one person in the first round, maybe he can get two. Maybe he can do something else. I don't know. But Miami's the one that I think we need to worry about trading back. From what I hear, they're opening the doors to trading back again um, and just just piling up their draft picks. I thought that... Uh... Cody brought up a good point about, you know, once you're out of the top 15 or whatever, you know, like we're trying to get in the mind of Scott Fitterer. Yeah. Right. And in some ways is that now we're starting to see a GM who I don't know if we haven't seen that. I would actually, I would say we haven't seen this at all, but if we start trading back, it will be intriguing and yep. that's what's going to bring me to this is that um, at salesman you got to follow you got to follow him on Twitter. He's a great Twitter follower. Follow and uh, actually a new fa- a new follower of the podcast. I saw him a while back. Say, how did I not know about this show already? <laughs> that's what I was saying. How did you not know? I knew about your Twitter account at ninety five. Keep pounding, salesman. He likes to talk about poop. And shit on Marty Herney. He, <laughs> he shits on Marty Herney. That's his account. That's yeah, actually he's a good friend his of mine. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he sent me this. He said, you guys got to talk about this on the podcast. I thought it was interesting and relevant to the trade back discussion. The average team has 8.1 picks in the NFL draft, including compensatory picks. Over the last eight drafts, Carolina has averaged 6.3 picks. <sighs> Per year. So Interesting. what does this tell us right right away? What does this tell us about the Carolina Panthers and what they've been doing with the NFL draft over the last eight years? And when I think about the Panthers in the draft, I think about me going and playing a game in Vegas, like a three-card poker or something, this or that, that I don't really know the ins and outs of the rules right i was uh, i was hanging out with a friend the other day and he was uh we were at the bar and he was playing one of those pool poker machines that they say can't give you money but somehow pay money and all this jazz and he was doing these extra things he's like moving these little like like if i would have gone up there and just put 20 in it and just pulled the thing three times (laughs) Right. That's what I think the Panthers have done. We just walked up to the craps table. We just put the money on the pass line three times and that was it. No back in the bets. Mm -hmm. No this and that. You know what I'm saying? No mixing the money around. We've played it straight. We are, we played it straight and we just tried to pick where we were at. There's been some small baby moves, usually up, but they're like, wussy moves you know what i'm saying we moved yeah. up for greg little 
We moved up for Devin Funches. That was another wussy ass move. I hated that. Yeah, one. none of our trade the, ups ever pan out. Really, we have not worked the draft. Just worked it as a tool. Like the Miami Dolphins have worked it this year, right? And really, in well, years past, yeah, yeah. The or Miami how the Patriot, or the how we used to celebrate it. the Patriots working the draft. I mean, the right. Patriots right. and always... the Seahawks. Well, here yeah, and Seahawks. Fitter, here's a good, here's a good, a good example. And this is the the point to bring it up. Scott Fitterer is here, and he's coming from a team that has finessed the draft. I'm not saying that the Seattle Seahawks have had great drafts, right? They've picked some bum ass running backs over the last couple of years, but they have finagled some extra picks, and we have not. Yeah, and you know, I, it does make me wonder if that would change what we're what we're going to do. Um, Infinity Gaming says Jeremy Chin was a good trade up, and that's true. Um, and wasn't Taylor Moten traded up for as well? I don't know. I want to say maybe. He yeah, won. yeah. But or you know what? No, I think I don't know if we traded up for Moten. I, do you remember? Um, didn't the Bills jump right in front of us and get a guard? No, yeah, right in front Bill, of us. But yeah, the Bills, the Bills jumped Deion ahead of Dawkins. us. Yeah, they went and got Deion Dawkins, oh, and then man. and then later they we jumped up. Taylor Moten. Yeah, I don't and think then, we yeah, jumped up. Well, we, but and we did move up for Greg Little, uh, yep. like you mentioned. And then another thing too is I kind of feel like, and you know, tell me if you think I'm wrong on this. You know, maybe we've given up too many picks for players that, you know just haven't turned out to be much, you know? Well, yes. I mean, Devin, F- Devin Funches is a supreme example of this. And I know this yeah. is dipping into the well at this point. Devin Funches is in the rear view. But the idea is, did you have to trade up to get that same player? Right. And and, and at the moment that we went after Devin Funches, we didn't have to trade up. He would have been there. They're like sometimes – at some point, five or six years ago, there was this crazy idea like that you knew another team was targeting the same exact player and at 182. <laughs> I didn't buy that shit ever. I didn't ever buy that shit. I feel like that's all disinformation that's been put out by teams. We never be- benefited from those moves right there. I think we moved up for um, – oh, you know who else we moved up? Marty Herney. Here's the one uh, that uh, – Tennessee safety, homie. That Golden. sucked. Golden. Golden. Yes. Golden was another yeah, mug Brian, we moved up Brian for. Bess has that in the chat. Just terrible, dude. He was slow on film. He was short. Just never. The best thing he did was shoot Alabama and their the fans. Double the double bird. Yeah. <laughs> that's that was a, the that's best about thing. it, man. All right. Um, so let's see what else we got. Um, before we go any further, I do want to kind of plug, uh, not plug this. I want to go ahead and tell you guys about this. Let me see if I can put the banner up right here. Actually, you know what we need is we need some, we need some thumbs up. We need you to call into the show. Two, five, two, 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 eight, 50, You need to share this show. CK shame them. Sus, us, us, subscriber shame. You should be ashamed that we've been doing this since 2013. And all I ask you homies for is a like, a share, a retweet. That's it. That's it. I was thinking about this. Like, I got friends that are starting business in this. I just retweet this month like crazy. Like, why not? <laughs> what does that take out of you? What does that take from you? On top of that, guys, as we go forward, we're going to be starting a new partnership with Avolta. If you want to cut the cord with your electricity and get a fixed rate on your electricity, you can switch to solar. You can add uh, value to your property. No money down. And if you sign up right now, I think they got a deal right now. You don't have payments for a year. Like you don't have to pay your electric bill for a year. What they do is they swap your current electric bill and they install solar and you go, uh, you get a fixed rate. It's never going to go up. Um, and you own your own energy. Uh, it's kind of a, a neat opportunity. We're going to be keep going forward and supporting a Volta 
because Kevin Brown is uh, a listener of the C3 Panthers podcast and has been that way. He's Cody's buddy, and uh, he is, I think, a Clemson fan as well. Maybe I got that wrong, but he's been a listener of the show for a while. Kevin Brown, go ahead and contact him if you want to cut the cord with your electric company and uh, help the earth. That's what I say. As we go forward and we power up this show like a Volta's powering up people's homes, we signed Daquan Smith today. Who is Daquan Smith? I don't know until I saw him <laughs> being signed today. But we did sign a defensive tackle from the Tennessee Titans. The Titans defense we have been impressed with uh, since with Rabel taking over the hizzy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so they got a respectable, respect, respectable defense. We needed defensive tackle help. At this point, because K1 Short is no longer on the team, Derek Brown is nice. Uh, we've got some guys we think we can beat that can be versatile, but this draft is not known for defensive tackle help. Cody Scott Fitterer continues to fill in the gaps on this roster. I don't really, I mean, like we can look at these clips of Daquan Smith that you're putting up here. Thank you for doing that. Um, but at the very least, it's a body we needed. Yeah, it's a body we needed. And listen, we want to play faster and more physical. And more importantly, we want to get better against the run. And you're able to see him demonstrate some of those abilities here. Um, you know, right here, he's physical at the line of scrimmage. They have him lined up uh, against the center. And he's just able to mine that egg gap the entire way, shed the block. And, and really be physical on the interior. And I think, um, you know, the opportunity of, of getting him um, some looks at three technique next to Derek Brown, uh, I think that's going to be pretty ferocious for us. Having Brian Burns on one side, then having Derek Brown in the middle, Daquan Jones next to him, and then shooting Hassan Reddick off the other side. Dude, the Panthers are slowly but surely bolstering this pass rush, um, continuing to build upon all the good things that we've been doing so far in free agency. And, the, dude, the man is a physical monster. I mean, you can see some of his stuff right here. Um, he sets a very uh, physical presence at the line of scrimmage, running back, tried to jump over his head, and he was able to grab his feet and yank him back down. Uh, the dude's a monster, man. He is a, a very tough player. Um, it's a one-year deal. So, yet again, this isn't another you know, long-term signing for us, but for a team that's looking to continue to build upon um, the success that it was able to uh, acquire under new head coach Matt Rule, I think this is a step in the right direction. It's more of a physical presence where it matters the most in the trenches. Uh, I think it was who's a uh, the guy that got cut by the Browns. Um, he was a Jet originally, then he went to the Browns defensive tackle. Sheldon Richardson uh, just yeah. was cut just a couple of other day, a couple of days ago, and that was on Friday. Actually, that news broke that Sheldon Richardson would be released by the Browns. Had a big season for the Browns last year, but they brought in Jadavian Clowney. Sheldon Richardson was supposed to be paid twelve million dollars. And I'm sitting there when this happens, you know, you want every name that comes across the wire you're interested in. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, we need some news. We need some news. We need something to talk about as Carolina Panther fans. And Sheldon Richardson almost made a lot of uh, made sense for the Carolina Panthers. But this Daquan Smith, four million dollars, one year deal. Not only are we adding pieces that are interesting and intriguing in a uh, Hassan Riddick one year (laughs) deal. Right. Is that it doesn't seem like we're just adding guys that are bums, but adding guys that potentially are playing for a contract in a year where the salary cap is low and they want to play in a contract year. I don't know if Daquan Smith's going to just be a stud going forward, but he doesn't seem a bum. I like I continue to see Scott Fitterer's plan evolving and I don't want to be too excited, Cody about Scott Fitter and just heap praise on all of this, heap praise in this. But 
it just seems <laughs> like it's like we're checking boxes. Yeah, we're just checking the saying. boxes of what a GM should be doing. <laughs> And it's not like we're giving him credit for twiddling his thumbs and wearing a nice tie or something. You know, the man has been making moves. You know, I think, you know, have we made one complaint in the past few weeks? I mean, other than the people that aren't believers in Sam Donald and still think he sucks, right? Uh, I can understand why if you hated that move, you might not like Fitterer. But, I mean, what has Scott Fitterer done as of yet that we're like, oh, dude, terrible signing? Bad move. I don't think anything. No, I don't think anything. Yeah. No, I, don't think anything. anything. I think nope. the only thing that we criticized about was the desperation that we showed with trying to go and get uh, Matt Stafford, um, and what we were willing to give up to make that happen. Um, and the the way that we played our cards was not um, like we were. Not, it was clear that we were dealing with a rookie GM. It felt like um, that was the biggest criticism we've had. And those are all growing pains. But for the most part, I think we can say early on his tenure, Matt Fitterer, granted, we've got Scott. to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah, Matt Fitterer, my bad, Scott Fitterer. Um, but we've got to keep in mind, literally two years ago, we had a, I'm not going to say an identical offseason, but a similar one where we saw some, uh, some veteran signings that we were like, oh, this is going to be good. And then we shit the bed. Like as a as a defense, it was great at first, but then we just went nowhere. So, so I'm, not, that, what? I'm not ready to crown him yet. I am ready to say we're doing what we need to do. I'm seeing a plan work out, but until this season actually takes place, it's hard to say that he's doing good, making good good moves yet. I do understand that uh, CK and that like you don't want to just bless people for doing something like, and they're supposed to be yep. doing this. The one thing I like about this free agency that we're doing is I'm not interested in the names. Yeah. It's not the names. It's the position it's the moves. Yeah. It's like, it's like, what are we, it's the setup, you know, you're looking at the, the length of the contracts is interesting. We're not just getting wowed. I felt like this is Marty Herney's off seasons. And, and, and I will be honest is that I was, uh, I'm a, closet Ma- marty herney supporter right like i mean i don't think i don't think he is as bad as people said but he probably is so i'm like i'm starting to <laughs> buy into what like I'm, i mean but here is i have some logic like he did execute look he was all right in the he's okay in the draft not great his free agencies were okay uh, in the second stint but here's the one thing when when I'm looking at Marty Herney's second run when it comes to free agency, I felt like he just said this is we're gonna get one kind of blue chip player. We're not not the top top player, like but we're gonna get one name that that's the guy that we land in free agency. Originally it was Brashore Breland. Then he got that crazy foot thing, but then he pivoted to Don Terry Poe and he landed that. And then I think the next year it was like Julius Peppers. It was just like one. It was like you got one Gerald dude. Gerald McCoy, Bruce Irving. Yeah, that, yeah that you got. It was like the Gerald McCoy. And you got this one dude. And then we went into the draft with still a couple of holes. And I felt uh, that Marty Herney's style was this, was going to the, like you make a couple of moves in free agency that you think you can land. Then you go into the draft and you get the best you can. And then you use this last wave of free agency to fill in the gaps of what you need. What I like about what Fitterer is doing is, is it seems like he's just inverted the draft in that last wave. And what he's done is this, is he's gone out and gotten, I guess his, I won't say blue chip, but he went and got his dudes, I guess, early on. But it's all been about having it so that you can have a team without this draft. And I've said it for the last couple of weeks is that like the Panthers have a roster that they could put out on the field. It might not be the greatest in the world, but they have a full roster right now. So then when you go into the draft, it gives you a lot more flexibility to move around, to trade back, to acquire players, to do different things. And so I, that is the one area that I am trying to crown and celebrate 
Scott Fritter Fitterer a little bit, and I think he's a total goofball too. Yeah. So, um, wait, who's a goofball? Fitterer, you saw his press. He Curry? watches YouTube conference. Uh, con- uh, he watches like concerts on YouTube. That's a goofball thing to do. Like you sit around with your family and you pop popcorn. You watch like YouTube on YouTube. Dude, That's a goofball thing. Hey, I'm and I look. I'm a goofball. Marty I'm a goofball. Like look, when he was shit in his spare time. Like Marty Herney was the king of goofballs. Why would you? Why? Well, like what? What makes you think I that? I think Marty Herney's pretty cool, man. Like, no, I feel like if you're 65 you, years you old and you're rolling you? like Marty Herney Listen, and you do I, the glasses, look, look, you do dude, the glasses look, like this. Dude, I'm telling you, I don't know why the both of you continue to, to mm. uh, talk good about this dumpster fire right, general you're manager. Right. You're right. I'll give you that. I'll from. give you that. No, I was just curious what you thought about him being uh Dude, His whole persona, the way, the way he looks, the way he dresses, the way oh, he talks, no. the way he drafts, the he way just he hates overpaid them, players. Sick he, hates them. he just hates them. Goofball, right now, the reason I... The reason I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm not ready to crown him, and I'm not ready to put too much praise into him, though, in Scott Fitterer, is we can sit here and talk about how he's done this year. We don't know what type sure. of a GM he is until yeah. we have an actual proper off season where we don't have a reduced cap room where people are playing for one year deals because they need to try to play themselves into a contract. Like literally, people were just looking for a landing spot at this point in time. Um, and, and yes, you can find good spots anywhere you go, but you know, the reality is, would we have gotten this deal done? Uh, if the cap room had gone up, right? (laughs) That's a perfect comment. You're a simp. You're a simp for a loser GM. Move on from this shit. (laughs) All he did was overpay players. And fucking but, oh, he all right, all you, but now you're trying to make him a goofball, though. I guess he the best comment Blake better said this he's the king of meatballs. That's the goofiest thing. What does Grand Reaper say? Cody is right. Hernie was a cornball. He's a meatball, he's a cornball. He's all, all right, that shit, right. dude. Hey, I just look as I agree with what CK is saying is that we don't know what the totality of Scott Fitter's moves are and this or that but i gotta say watching it just as i've watched every other off season i think it's been strategic i'm excited it's about it i've been disappointing <laughs> like we haven't started right, this right. up and said you know uh you know we're we're already ready to move on from scott fitterer uh, apart from some other like criticisms that we've had then there you know some might be considered minor criticisms um you know it's he's been you know pretty pretty uh, you know what we expected. He's not been <laughs> over the top. Marty is a guy I know has hard candy in his house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this comment got this is got that's Cody giggling. Right there, he's got giggling. You know it, dude. What are they called? Those uh, Werther's originals. You uh, know that's right. the shit that he has, dude. So for people oh, listening uh, later on the iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, wherever, get your podcast. <laughs> Jake the Snake FU said this is you know Marty is the guy I know has hard candy in his house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh so you know, I'm I have been look, you can call me a simp, Josh. You can do all this and that because I don't want to just shit entirely on Marty Herney. But I do. I think you guys are right. I mean, like I'm, I'm agreeing more and more with you guys. At the very minimum, uh, it's it's time for new era, new era. But the I have been saying from the beginning, the Scott Fitterer kind of plan that he is exacting in free agency has been logical. So that's uh, that's where I'm at. And uh, now we need to go to this, uh, Cody. You've got to. You're going to lead this. I'm going to put it up here. Um, but I hate the NFL draft buildup. I love the actual draft night, right? Like I love this. And by the way, guys, we are going to be uh, hosting. I think this is our eighth 
live draft party, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. This is our eighth live draft party. It'll be Thursday night. This is April 29th. We'll start at 7 p.m. The draft, I believe, is at 8 p.m. We're going to go. And uh, the question is now that we pick so early, do we go the entire first round? We will do our best in that. I'm interested to see how this turns out, but it's going to be the most exciting NFL draft, I believe, in our era, folks, with four or five quarterbacks going in the top 10 names that everyone knows. I believe that this NFL draft is going to be one of the most exciting that we have seen uh, ever in in the time that we are. Uh, following the, follow it via the internet and all of that. So we hope that you can join us Thursday night. We have a live draft party where we just hang out. We bring in all different types of consultants from different teams, analysts. Uh, my boy Scott Mason is going to come in and talk about that Jets, Jets number two pick, it's Zach Wilson. Hopefully we'll have to see if we can track down Peter Panacey. It's going to be busy writing on uh, for the San Francisco 49ers pick. At three, will it be Mac Jones? Will it be Justin Fields, who I believe it is? And then will the Carolina Panthers trade back? If you want the draft show to go forever, you're hoping they trade back. That's what I'm telling you. I hope you can be a part of it live Thursday, April 29th, the C3 live draft party. We need you to be a part of it. We're going to cycle you guys in. We'll use that stream yard link. We'll have the Discord chat going. We have a contest going in uh, right now. Is that if you can submit your top ten players that you believe will be drafted, your top ten picks, you got to submit them in the order that they will be picked. We pick based on order, and then overall, you can submit that at Carolina Cat Chronicles at Gmail dot com or. Uh, go to the Discord and uh, submit that there. There's another place to do it. All right. Good Lord. That's a information overload all to get to this that some people have asked us to do a mock draft. And I hate mock drafts, Cody. I loathe them. I Why, lose man? the mock draft understand. because they're it's dumb. It's like it just it's just over no, and over. Funny, dude, a lot of dumbness. It, dude, gambling is dumb. Gambling, you can fuck around and lose your mortgage payment. I this think, is fun. This I is, think I think that's the same reason that a lot of reporters hate it. Like they hate mock draft season. Like there is a large number of reporters out there that just despise it. Bill Voth being one of them. Oh, you know. but they're all curmudgeons, dude. I love it, man. The, we only get to do this one time a year, and it gets the fan base, you know, interested. You know, it's like I, one of my favorite sayings is, is uh, hope springs eternal around the draft, right? Because every year it's a reset. You have a brand new year to bring in brand new faces from the college game. And again, man, it's like this is the future of your football team. This is where you draft future superstars. I love it. Tony, you, listen, Tony, you don't have to love it. You can hate it all you want. I'll love it enough for both of us. How's that? I'll tell you why I hate all of this draft speculation. One year, Mel Mayock won in the right a draft guide, and we had like two or three people, and I did all the editing on the draft guide. I put all the, I built all these photos. I did all of this shit, and we sold like 12 of them for like two ninety nine. A spent like 27 hours. The other thing is, as I've been actually, I spent like 87 hours on this stupid ass draft gun. On top of that, um, when I was maintaining the website a little bit more closely and just trying to think you had to talk about the draft to be relevant and this and that. What I hate about this is how much time we spend mocking, thinking, talking, forecasting, writing articles, this and that in like half one like one half percent turns out to be true when it comes down and we shake it all out. Right. Is that like, if we come back and we look at this draft in one year, all of those forecasts, all of that, like 1% will be accurate. But anyway, I know y'all like it and the draft is coming up and we've had, 
uh, followers of the show asking, can we put together an official C3 mock draft? And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to do it as fast as we possibly can. Right now, I've picked this up. I'm using the mock draft machine on the draft network. I don't pay for anything extra, so we're just going to do it like that. I'm sorry. You can call me Marty Herney, playing it straight <laughs> and this and that, and just stepping up to the table and just pulling a slot machine. That's fine. In this draft, Cody, you have to be our guy that is our leader. We will follow you onto the hill. Trevor Lawrence selected at one. Zach Wilson by the Jets at number two. Trey Lance to the 49ers. Justin Fields to the Falcons. Jamar Jamar Chase, wide receiver, LSU. Jalen Waddle, two wide receivers early. Penny Sewell goes uh, right before us to the Lions. And now it comes. (laughs) Can the Carolina Panthers, what do we do? Is it Kyle Pitts? Is it Rashawn Slater? Is it Mac Jones? What do you air? Let me see. So, will, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. For, exclusive. First of all, let me just uh, let me shout out Grim Reaper for giving us that ten dollar love bomb. He said, "In a world that needs Panthers podcasters, there's the C three Panthers podcast." You already yeah, know, man. my man. Appreciate the love. And um, yeah, what I'll do. Um, out. We'll we'll do a few more of these before the um, uh, before the the actual draft, um, and, and do some with trades. But I I actually like not doing trades because I think sometimes the trades get unrealistic as to what actually would happen and what would be offered. So this is good. Uh, the way it you're is. right Uh-oh. because trading in fictional mock draft land would be ridiculous. And uh, out of the norm. <laughs> Sorry, <good laughs> but I, I'm voice. talking about, like, the, you know, the amount that it takes for a pick and what teams are willing to move and what teams aren't, you know, whatever. There's different ways to do it. Listen, if Kyle Pitts is on the board, I know just a few months ago, me and Tony both w- would scoff at the even the notion of drafting a tight end with this pick. Right, but if you watch the film review that I did on this channel, he's a matchup nightmare, man. You're going to be able to put him anywhere on the field, in the slot, out at X. You're going to be able to put him in line to be able to block, even though that's not my favorite um, way to use him. But really, that's beside the point anyway. You're going to match him up on safeties and linebackers, and he's going to catch everything that you throw at him. Uh, I mean, forget the fact that he's a tight end. Kyle Pitts might legitimately be the best receiver in this entire draft. And, you know, if you're trying to build an offense around Sam Darnold, having a weapon like Kyle Pitts that's going to be able to go up and grab every football and come down with it, dude, that's a hell of a weapon to add while you're trying to rebuild a football player. So, I mean, if that happens – you know, you might say, well, Rashawn Slater's still there. Um, you know, why not uh, jump on? Is Panay Sewell still there, too? Or is he off the board? Yeah, he went right before. He was at seven. Oh, seven. So, All right, so then, yeah, seven, it's like, yeah. listen, I, so I, it's I'm, Pitts, I'm a Slater. Fan. Here's your options right here. We're going to make <laughs> our pick. We got Pitts. We can go tight end in top ten and in the first round. <laughs> I hate that usually. Rashawn Slater, offensive tackle Northwestern, could be the pick here. And then I guess you, you're you're kind of at this is the only other names I suspect that you are willing to entertain are uh, Sertain, Horn, and Micah Parsons. Yeah, and really it's mainly Horn, Horn and Slater. But, you know, and I'm a fan of Slater. I really am. But, dude, if Kyle Pitts isn't, you know, if he's on the board, dude, talent evaluators are talking like this dude is a surefire Hall of Famer. Yeah. And when you yeah. and when you look when you look at the film, it's easy to see what's impressive about him and what he does well. Um, it CK is a made the pick. For us. You made the pick, then. This is such a hard one. Like, do I do I want? Are we doing this based on what we think? We, what we want, or based on what I think they're going to do? Mm, 
what you want right now. This is our mock draft. Yeah, what would you? This prefer? is who we want. We get we get two picks, Pitts and Slater. And I tell you this, is I hate picking a tight end in the first round, but this is like the only time it seems like it would work. It would be best. In fact, is that it just seems like he's head and shoulders. If he's the best receiver, arguably in the draft, and this and that, are like you getting a twofer? He's a twofer. Yeah. So I would my say, vote is Pitts. You have to be the tiebreaker. It's not really a tiebreaker, but I what think do you want I think they filled a need in the draft in the off season, and I think the only thing we haven't touched was their left tackle, and I think we're gonna go Rashawn Slater. Rashawn Slater. Mm. That was the only right. thing we filled a need in the dra- we're we're in, in the off season. Chat well, the chat room has to solve it. Then well, chat well, room. Well, 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 let's just do a two or three vote. Tony, what's your vote? I don't know enough about Slater, man. I want to. I mean, I want to pick an offensive lineman, but I don't. Is he is is he just as surefire as Sewell? Sewell? Yeah, listen to me. He's my number one rated offensive tackle. He's the third player on my big board behind Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields. I'm really high on Slater. My thing is this: this is a deep draft for offensive tackle. I don't necessarily think that they're on. Rashawn Slater's level. Um, they don't have his versatility. I know Rashawn has played right tackle for two years. Then in his final year, played left tackle and was more dominant there than anywhere else. And he shut down Chase Young. I mean, literally shut him down. Dominant. Mm. We've been the reason. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm a big fan of the the idea to go to Slater. I hate passing on Pitts because I know. We are going to regret not having that level of talent at that position. I'm like, picking gonna... Pitts. I'm picking Pitts, not because he's a tight end, but because but I think he could be a receiver. How right? often... and, and I'm not saying he's going to be a receiver for us, but if he is a tight end who is just the best receiver in the draft, he's both. Yeah, I say for the sake of this, let's do Pitts because right, I feel like it. at most mock drafts, have Rashawn Slater going to us right there. And, you know, Lynn, I think Lynn is in here somewhere and she said it best. Pitts probably is not going to be on the board when <laughs> we pick. So it's almost like, you know, you have to. And that is against my, I hate the idea of a tight end in the first round. So um, he better be the best motherfucker ever. All right. <laughs> Um, that leads us to the 39th pick. And here are a few picks before us. 33, Trevon Morig, Javante Williams, running back, North Carolina goes 34. Joe Tyron, Washington goes 35 to Atlanta. Landon Landon Dickerson inside offensive lineman. So I guess guard, right? Uh, uh, 36. Dickerson is a center. <clears throat> All right. So Dickerson, 36 to the Dolphins. Jevin Holland, safety to the Eagles. From He's from Oregon. Jason Owe, edge uh, to the Bengals. Now it comes to the Carolina Panthers. The Carolina Panthers, we've picked a tight end in the first round, guys. I think that. Are you going to? I know you are not high on Eric Stokes. Well, it's not that I'm not high on him. I just think that there are things that he needs to get better at. He certainly has the frame. He's tall enough. Uh, I think he's six foot one, 195 pounds. Um, I, I, the dude's fast. Uh, he managed to uh, have a good number of interceptions this year. I think he had three or four interceptions. He's a good player. Um, I just think there are guys that are a little bit of, uh, ahead of him. Uh, hit that position button and see what corners they have available. The POS plus um, on the, yeah, and just see what corners are available. Um, so right now. You like uh, Kelvin Joseph. You love him, right? Yeah, I'm a fan of Kelvin Joseph. Um, How are we not picking offensive linemen? No, I, I'm, like I'm, just feel looking at, I'm looking at who's all on the on the board, and Joseph will probably be there a little bit later too. So, um, OT. who? Yeah, what what are the OTs available? 
offensive tackle. This uh, this draft right. network, by the way, um, is super creative with its uh, uh, with its rankings, so, like how it drafts for every team. Like literally, they've got every person on here that they like from thirty eight to third. Like everybody that they had ranked at thirty eight has already been dra- up to thirty eight has been drafted. Like right, this, like, <laughs> so it's just it's, the first thirty eight. Yeah, it's exactly it's, it's uh, like fun. it's just it's checking off what they've ranked as their best at, at at certain positions. It's interesting. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. I'm I'm interested in this, Cody. Though, is that we went we sacrificed round one. Um, we went pits. We sacrificed the offensive line there. So how yeah. are you gonna? Are you are you really trying to tell me now we're gonna go we're gonna go corner here? Well, who's I mean, the better uh, option uh, here uh, at uh, three? Is it getting a Coastman? And we were on that. Um, a lot. Who was it? Uh, one of the four man rush guys was trying to talk us into Terrence, Terrence Marshall, Marshall Jr. here as the yeah, best player had, available. We had, we had taken Rashawn Slater uh, in the first round in that mock. Okay. So it made it a so, little. Personally, I think we're sitting this. Is that, are we going to look at your offense, your cornerback who is Kelvin Joseph, right? That's a top guy on our list. Or are we going to go offensive tackle here? Cost me. They talk shit about him in that draft. They say he won't mean enough. Et- Etchenberg, Notre Dame, Rand Dunes, Christensen, Mayfield, come on, tell me what we gonna, what are we gonna do? Corner or offensive lineman? I am going to have to go with uh, Dylan Redunce. The In my mind, that's the offensive tackle I like. Very technical. It comes from a run first football team uh, up there in North Dakota. Um, you know, I, I'm really a big fan of him. I also like Liam Eichenberg as well. But to me, do you like, like these, these guys two, over these guards? Do you like them over Wyatt, uh, Wyatt Davis and Creed Humphrey? Let me tell you, I know uh, Chuck from Elizabeth City in the chat who loves them some Quinn Miners. Uh, we might be able to look to pick him up later. Um, I do like Creed Humphrey, that would be another center uh, for us. But listen, the fact that Cam Irving or Greg Little is going to be our starting left tackle next year. I just don't trust either of those two. Um, I'm okay with um, really either of um, Eichenberg or Dylan Redunes. I think Dylan probably has um, a little bit more physical upside, can probably beef up a little bit more, whereas Eichenberg is probably more of a finished product right now. He's probably already nearer to his ceiling. Um, so it's kind of potential versus production. Also, Notre Dame is an offensive line factory. So either one of those dudes right there is perfect. Either Liam Meichenberg or Dylan Redunes. Who are we picking, CK? I think Redunes. I think we're definitely right. going to tackle here. All right, let's do it. All let's right. do it. So we've picked Pitts, Redunes, and now it's time to get another offensive lineman in my mind. Still, we've got to go to the 73rd pick. Ooh, Jabril Cox is gone. I like him. I think he's going to be good. Who is up on that? All right, so 66 is Elijah Molden, cornerback to the Jets. Tommy Togolai. Togai? No. Togai. Togai. Tommy Togai to the Texans at 67. Tommy Tremble from Notre Dame to the Falcons at 68. Yeah, Brevin none of those Jordan. dudes are real name, name people. Uh, Brevin Jordan, real. Miami, 69 to the Bengals. I F uh, Efetu Melifawanu. Wait, Mel... Efetu Melifanwu. Melifanwu. Cornerback Syracuse goes to the Eagles. Jabril Cox, I like him. Uh, goes to Denver, Davis, Mills, quarterback to the Detroit Lions. Now the Carolina Panthers have, we've picked a tight end. Now we've picked a tackle slash guard, whatever you need him to be. And now are we picking need or are we picking best player available? 
Interesting, interesting, interesting. What do you do so, if it's best player available? Let's just go to their rankings and see what they got to say. This is what they are saying. Mm-hmm. It, oh, look, Quinn Menners is there. Quinn we Ryan, almost need to yeah. get him. Jamar uh, Johnson, safety, Indiana. Any thought? Oh, Richie Grant. Richie Everybody Grant. look. And see, this is the thing. I think they're painfully low on Richie Grant on this draft board. I don't think. I agree. He's there. going in the second. Yeah. So on, on the draft night on the Panther Nation podcast, I pounded the table for Richie Grant. I think he is going to be a long-term free safety for us. He's going to be that ball hawk patrolling, patrolling the deep backfield. Um, I think that would be a bonkers pick for us. I would love that. Um, Jamar Johnson's a player I've been watching too uh, recently. Another tall, rangy player with wingspan uh, that will go and make a play on the football. Um, what cornerbacks are available? Tyson Campbell is another one from uh, from Georgia, the cornerback. No, but, there is. Yeah, I know. I, I I saw him on the board still. So Paulson and Debo. Yeah, see, this is the. I mean, right now, Tyson Campbell is probably the last corner. I feel like we can get Trill board. Williams next round, maybe. Maybe it's gonna be a, st- a stretch. Yeah, but hell, Who's there's better? a chance you might pick a uh, pick up Grant. But if you love him, like there's no Richie reason or who? Who do you like? Oh, crazy better. Tyson Campbell, Trey Williams, or Richie Grant? <laughs> Grant. All right, nine, now when it comes to safety, how about this? Up. Is Jamar Johnson or Richie Grant? Come on, you you watched it, Richie. Really? No doubt. He's twelve. Yeah, I, I think, dude, All right, we're they're, drafting they're, him. They're then you good with that, CK? Whatever. Let's man. do it. I'm I, at this point in time. I'm beyond my depth. So. I don't know. I don't know any. I watched. I've seen Richie dude, Grant. I'm, play, I'm telling you, they're stuff. big boys. And we saw the team be close to him, and like what was it, Senior Bowl yeah, or whatever? Senior Bowl. And dude, their rankings are fucked. I promise. That this is, I'm not a fan of their big board two years in a row now. All right, 113th pick. Let's see. People in front of us were um, Elijah Griffin, cornerback, goes USC to San Francisco, Deontay Brown, um, you know, oh, you're I don't... Do, do, do all so we can see all the players. Yep. All right. So here is we're in round four. That's what we are. Jordan Smith edge from UAB goes to Jacksonville. James Hudson, offensive tackle from Cincinnati, goes to the Jets. Robert Rochelle, Central Arkansas, goes to the Falcons. He's a cornerback. Uh Israel Maka Makumu. 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 Uh, cornerback, uh, South Carolina goes to the Texans. Aaron Banks, offensive lineman goes to no- uh, from Notre Dame, goes to the Browns. Kendrick Green from Illinois goes to the Bengals. And Frank Darby, Arizona State goes, he's wide receiver, goes to the Lions at 112. Carolina Panthers are on the board at 113. We've picked Pitts. We've picked Randoons. Now we've picked Richie Grant. Uh, and it comes to, I guess, and you tell me, where do we go? What do we need to look? So I, I feel like say, we still need to go back offensive line. I would say, yeah, 100%. Look at the offensive interior. I think we're good at offensive tackle with Moten. We just drafted Redunes. Um, we still have Greg Little and Cam Irvin on the roster. Um, Maybe a wide receiver? Running back? No, that's uh, – are you on I ideal or I O L? I'm on the predictive board. I don't know. Wait, oh no! no I, was I on, yeah. the, do the I O L. I'm trying to see the offensive interior. I'm 
David Moore, Drew Dahlman, Trey Hill, Sedarius Hutchinson, Tommy Kramer, Jack Anderson, Drake Jackson, Tristan Hodge are the top names. That goes from 134 to 232. I don't know any of these homies, bro. Do uh, Trey Hill. You want to draft him over? You want to look at no? Uh, what about uh, quarterback? You want to see? If, uh, oh, look, draft? Kyle why Trask. Look at that, Kyle Trask, right there. Why have we, Why have we drafted no. Kyle Trask? What 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 point does that make? What, does what that about mean? we drafted receiver? Pitts? We'd have a nice quarterback uh, connection already there. Yeah, we got about Sammy wide receiver. Donald, How about this? We don't need. You don't get a gym right here. Is there a gym at wide receiver? I don't oh, know. bro, Daz Newsom is on the board. The receiver from uh, North Carolina? Dude, if Daz Newsom is on the board, take that, dude. Put him All right. in the well, that's what we're doing. We're I don't even know who he is, but boom. So we picked the wide receiver. Tell us why we should be excited about Daz Newsom. Yeah, uh, Daz Newsom, uh, six foot one from uh, North Carolina. Really That's fast guy. No, dude. dude <laughs> I'm just trying to, trying to mess Six me up, foot bro. one's not impressive. Like, you dude, can't dude, come in and foot. be like this. I'm Listen, five nine not, and three quarters. And in the fourth round. You're, 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 you're drafting a player that you're going to put on the inside in the slot very fast. You can take the top off, too. You're going to be able to run him on some spider routes, uh, uh, some dragon concepts. You're going to be able to do a ton with this player. He's a fun guy. Uh, trust me, fans of U- of uh, UNC Tar Heels, they know that Daz Newsom is a real one. All right, we're at pick 151. We're in the fifth round. Keith Taylor goes cornerback from Washington to Jacksonville. LSU safety, Jacoby Stevens goes to the Jets. Oh. Louisville wide receiver, Des Fitzpatrick goes to the Texans. Cincinnati safety, James Wiggins goes to the Falcons. Oklahoma's Adrian Ely, uh, offensive tackle, goes to the Bengals. And Vanderbilt's edge rusher, Deo Odeyingabo. 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 Uh, goes 150 to the Eagles. Now the Carolina Panthers on the board. 151, we've drafted Kyle Pitts. We've drafted Rand Dunn's. We have now drafted Richie Grant and now a wide receiver and somebody that I'm supposed to be excited because he is six foot one. What was his name again? Uh, Daz Newsom. All right, Daz and Newsom. And runs a low Daz- four four. So remember that number if you're if you're trying Ooh, to. That don't mean nothing in this NFL no more, bro. Yeah, you got to run, run like four ones to make me excited. No, I'm. <laughs> All right, so what do we do here? We're in the fifth rounds of the Carolina Panthers. <sighs> Thinking about our team, how do we develop and going forward? Are there? Is this the oh, worst dude. defensive lineman draft in the history of football? Yeah, uh, hit hit uh, the defensive line. Yeah, this the, is. Um, I was reading something about it earlier that this is like one of the. Worst defensive tackle drafts in uh, recent idea. history. Yeah, it, it is a bad one. It's not. Uh, it's definitely not a not a good one. Um, yeah, not none of the defensive line guys are, are anyone I would take here. Go. Uh, let's just do all. Oh, let's see what um. Uh, what tight ends are available? Oh, we already took a tight end. Never mind. Uh, we did. Yeah, but so, this is where this is. I bet you this is one of these guys right here is going to have a better career than Kyle Pence. Ah, uh, shut up! <laughs> I promise you. Hit tight end uh, or hit go all. I just did. Go How about all. this? Um, I just did all. All right, so all. Yeah, we need, all. To, see, we need to see every player they have. So we right now what? you're in the you're in the running back range. Um, Chuba Hubbard would be a good pick. Uh. A change of pace back for Christian McCaffrey. Um, Rashad Weaver might just be a good upside. Who's this David Moore from Grambling? What about him? Uh, Interior offensive lineman. Uh, We already picked an interior offensive line guy in Trey Smith. 
Um, let me see we, we get Trace, man. We ain't get no Trace, man. Literally the last pick we made. Oh, the, oh was that the last yeah. one? Oh, uh, four? Yeah, I thought we did Richie Grant. Or I thought we got a wide receiver. At four. Yeah, I thought we got a wide receiver from North Carolina. Yeah, we didn't get we got, no. We got Hill, yeah. And then we got. Uh, no, we went. We went Pitts. We went Rand Dunes. We went Richie Grant. You know you then can we click went, your picks, right? It'll show you at the top. Click and you're about right, to be upset, and you're about to be embarrassed, man. Okay, let's <laughs> see what our picks. Let's see what Where? our picks are. My picks. Yeah, my picks over my the right. Picks, yeah. Right there. Where's this guy, oh, man? Oh, that's how we paid. Uh, that that's yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, here's the deal, though. Now all the oh, all now the oh, now you don't. We need a linebacker. We need one of those. The interior we offensive need, lineman, um, in this yes. area would would probably. I oh, do. Trey Hill's still on the board. He's still yeah. Do it then, Trey Hill. Trey Hill played center for the Bulldogs offense. He started games aligning at, at guard as well. In the run game, he comes off the ball hard. He is heavy at the point of attack and plays with good natural rev- leverage. As a result, he is hard to bull rush. Although he plays with very good power in a phone booth, he is li- limited agility shows when he has to move and then case when he has to move. That sucks. This at the second level with regards to run blocking and also so is he going to be a center for us? Yeah, yeah he'll be a center, but um, it, uh, to, me, to me he has right. center and guard capability. Okay, so um, Cody, Cody, CK, why do you look like a a pill? <laughs> Hey man, yeah, that, that's not that's not nice. You're Maybe not- I am a pill, you son of a. <laughs> yeah, dude, don't don't judge him, man. Come on, dude. Uh, unreal. All right. all right, how many picks we got? Wait, what's all right? One ninety three. We're back on the board. We've got a. We've gone Pitts, Randoons, Grant, Newsom, Hill. Click all. It is time for us to just pick. Oh, Ooh, Cornell Powell's on the board, but we already have a receiver. Um, Demondre Lenore, we can grab another cornerback right here. You need a running back, bro. Let's see who we got. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, dude, Jared Patterson. Jared Patterson this year, dude, he's like five foot eight, but he had uh like almost he almost broke the record for touchdowns in a game by a running back. He had like seven touchdowns in a game or something crazy. Dude, Jared Patterson is the real dude. All right, so we've picked Jared Patterson, one ninety three running back from Buffalo. We're up at two twenty two again. Go to all. Look, the, the Tony guy is still there. Good guy. He was there in the last joint. I Dude, like. I hate Penn State coaches so bad. They have so many talented what? players. That no, they, you uh, hate Matt Rule? You hate Matt Rule? Matt Rule had State no player. hand. Of the, Matt Rule had no hand Penn in State that. Player. Penn State Matt Rule, player. Matt Rule had no hand in that bullshit. All right. Um, what do we do? I, don't I would care. say I don't um, at this point, names. yeah, just pick Shaka Tony because that's your name. I like him. Like I like <laughs> his name. Tony's a cool name. He spells it weird. So you say. So you say. So you say Tony's a cool. This name. is like the one. Uh, so you know what is that? Some people then uh, like somebody like T O N I. I'm like, what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, okay. Oh, we're done. All right. Yep. Our draft is over. Go to user picks. And this is what it is. Kyle Pitts, tight end Florida, goes at eight. We picked Dylan Randunes at 39. 
Offensive tackle from North Dakota State. Richie Grant, safety from UCF, goes at 73. Panthers select Daz Newsom, wide receiver, North Carolina, 113. Um, Trey Hill, um, interior offensive lineman from Georgia, goes at pick 151. Jarrett Patterson running back at 193. And Shaka Tony. Edge rusher from Penn State, the greatest player in the draft. 222. I like it. All right. That is the C3 mock draft. I mean, that may be a dumpster fire. (laughs) All right. So exhausting. Why, why, Cody, was that fun? Please tell me. Please tell me why anybody should care about that mock draft, A, and B, how much will be right? Will there be one player from that list that's on this team? Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Because I did it. Because I picked them. Yeah, it's going to happen, dude. We're going to bet $5? What, what, that we get? Yeah, I'll bet you $5 that we get at least one of those players. Yeah, all right. That's a fun... The chat room has to keep up with this for me. Yeah. yeah the problem is, is not, the only is one true. that we have That's a, a good shot. Bet. The only one that. that I think we have a shot at actually getting, like at, that I feel like we probably have a chance at actually being right is the Kyle Pitts one. I don't know that we're gonna pick them, mm-hmm. but I think out of like all the things, all the cards that could fall between now and then it's like how many players that were there in the draft that were picked in? What you know, were just picked like what, two hundred and forty? Uh yeah, something right. like that. So and you six have for us the odds that six also like one of the it's just so hard to hit those and it's not even the same on. like you can't just say six and two forty because think- then other teams are picking like I bet you it would be we need a crazy beautiful mind mathematician to figure out what the odds are for that I think, that would be uh, amazing what are the odds that one of those picks goes to us two the, of those uh, picks. The Ooh. sports books will tell you the odds, man. They've already got those things built out, bro. Hey, uh, yeah, I would say Richard Grant would probably be more likely because uh, we've met with them at the right. Senior Bowl. Safety and is Pitt, still Pitt, really it's Pitts is the like the like and, the same you know thing. really really I would say safety is really the true position that we haven't truly do you yet do you still have that draft, Tony standard. Do you still have the picks? Do you see what Atlanta picked at four on that? Did they yeah. pick a quarterback? Uh, uh, yeah. They could pick Trey Lance. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. This uh, has Atlanta getting going Justin Fields. Can I download it? Be awesome. <laughs> so they have they have Trey Lance going three to the 49ers? They have, uh, yes, Trey Lance going to the 49ers. And this is really it, what I've seen this. is It's like it don't matter. Is I feel like we could flip-flop. Bro, Trey Lance has been good in his pro days, but like Justin Justin Fields Fields is getting. I think the San Francisco 49ers are picking. I think they're. uh, I I almost wonder if they're picking Mac Jones. They're picking Justin Fields. I mean, bro, like, listen, here's the thing is, I've been. I've been. I don't know, man. It's it's going to be Justin Fields or or, uh, Mac Jones. I don't think Trey Lance is in that category. I agree. I agree. But I think Justin Justin Fields Fields is too much much. Too much of an upside to Kyle Shanahan, who has worked with a mobile quarterback before. That's my thing, is that, like, Kyle Shanahan creates the greatest running offense in the history of the world with a shitty quarterback. He also coached RG3. And, look, I'm printing the draft right now with my printer that barely works. I'm just going to say it from this perspective. I think Fields has proven just in the past few weeks – that he is, in my opinion, right, the number two quarterback Ooh. in this draft. Mm. All right. I'm and, just and saying, if you look at this the stuff, three, right? Uh, yeah. All like, right. I mean, I'm just saying, so, from what I've seen, it's just been, it, it's been, like, he has done everything he possibly can do right. Like, and I just, I, I don't know that I've seen that. I mean, Mac Jones has had a rough two pro days. Trey Lance has had yeah, deep no, pro days. Yeah, I don't days, want nothing to do with Mac Jones. I don't want nothing. I, I agree with you. Is I think Zach Wilson, the people have said he's a consistent number two now. 
Like yeah, it's just not budging. This is yeah. not budging. Maybe we're wrong. I just don't the know. The only thing that will fuck that up, uh, CK, is that if like um, Jacksonville comes out and picks Zach Wilson. They're not. They've already like <laughs> like Trevor yeah. Lawrence has already been given the playbook and everything. Like it's literally to that point already. So he's been given the playbook. Jacksonville Jaguars fans have donated to uh charities of Trevor Lawrence's choice. They've already gotten them engagement gifts. And then uh that Trevor would be Lawrence, the most troll thing if they pick somebody other than Lawrence right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and then so then Trevor Lawrence as a thank you said um you know to show can't wait to be a part of your community. Yeah, well, so, well he, he donated twenty thousand dollars to Jacksonville charities. <laughs> and then he said, I hope to be a part of your community of your community soon. Mm, so absolutely. yeah, that's uh that's as uh as good as done. But gentlemen, unfortunately, um, I'm yeah, gonna have to jump off early here. I have a very not fun appointment very, very early in the morning. Trust All me, right. I'd rather uh, I'd rather well, not be doing it. Tell the proctologist but, uh, I said, uh, you know, have fun on there. No, that's the fun mm-hmm. one. That would be fun. fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the fun one. Yeah, I look forward to that one all the time. But um, yeah, man, hit me up. Uh, uh, right. Give us Lack. Lack. Tell him, tell him. Yeah, yeah, at Cody Lack on Twitter, C O D Y L A C. Um, there will be a brand new mock draft on Draft Tech tomorrow. First and second round picks for the Carolina Panthers. And I am going to be doing another film room on Wednesday. Um, I don't know exactly what time, but there will be a film room on Wednesday. And um, at some point in time, Tony, I'm going to, for the people who do love this shit, unlike yourself, um, I'm thinking about doing a draft Q&A stream at some point and just talking nothing oh, but I'll draft. give you all types of questions. I'll give you all types of questions. For this sure, is, man. All right, man. Have a good one. We're gonna turn this into a Marty Herney love fest after you leave, bro. Oh, let me, get, oh let me get the fuck I'm, out of here. Gonna start bro. Writing all go. my <laughs> I'm gonna start writing gonna, down all my questions about people I don't care about. All right. All right. <laughs> Sounds good, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all right, thanks for uh, hanging out, brother. All right, yep. that is let me see. Oh, look at this. Look at that sexy mother. Yeah. Look at that Italian right. stallion over there. Yeah. It's probably Pop better if I do this. Yeah. Uh, Unbelievable. Boy. I know. That Italian motherfucker, as Blake Bettis likes to say. All right. Getting all so, kind of tracks. Uh, shame him up. Shame him up. Shame all right. Up. I got you. I got you. If you are in this live stream and you have not hit that like button, I have one thing to say to you, as I am Optimus Prime. Hit that like button. Subscriber shame. Roll out. Roll out. All right. So you're listening to C3 Panthers Podcast. It's the longest running Panthers podcast out there. Why? Because these homies just get up on the internet and they refuse to stop talking about the Carolina Panthers. The number's 252 Two two eight fifty ninety eight. We have gone through uh, the basic news of the week, going from the Carolina Panthers trying to trade back Scott Fitterer's uh, reactions, or I guess strategy going forward. We've done our own mock draft, and I think now is really time to start thinking about uh, going to the cat calls right now. The number is 252-228-5098. We want to hear what you have to say about the Carolina Panthers and this team. And uh, that's it. There. Let's see what you got to say. So what are your thoughts on catcalling? Yeah, it's pretty You shouldn't do that to somebody. And how did that make you feel? Uh, Very Uh, Actually, you know what? You know what? Actually, this is my first time doing this and I already messed it up. The cat calls tonight. We're going to try to help a, we're, we're partner, we're not help. We're partnering with a listener, a supporter of the C3 Panthers podcast, a fan, Kevin Brand, Kevin Brown from Avolta. Folks, the cat calls line is powered by solar energy, folks. You can own your own energy at a fixed rate for life with no money down. If you live in North Carolina, 
South Carolina. You talk to a listener of the C3 Panthers podcast, Kevin Brown. You can contact him uh, at kbrown at avolta.us. That's his email address. I will hit you up. All you got to do is hit me on Twitter. I will con- I will tag you with him. You can have solar power in your house, fix rates for life, increase your equity, and he helps the Cat Calls line exist because he's a fan who's called in. So what are your thoughts on Cat Calling? Yeah, it's pretty sh- You shouldn't do that to somebody. And how did that make you feel? Uh, very uncomfortable. So how do you think Cat Calling makes the person feel? One, it feels two, good. Like- and a three and a four and a Who's that cat sitting in the back corner with his face buried in his nose? Who's that kid that can use one? What's going on, fellas? It's Corey calling in. Um, just listening to this past week's show. Uh, just really think about the draft, man. It's, um, I really don't think we can overstate how important this next draft is going to be. Not even just for the Panthers, just as an NFL for a whole, man. I mean, like, obviously, drafts get hyped up all the time, but we're going to be looking at this for a long time, especially with the four quarterback prospects that are coming in that all have, well, shit, five now, Mac Jones. Um, they, 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 they've all got some attached to their name. We're, we're going to be comparing them. Who should have been drafted here? Who should have been drafted where? Who was a bust? Who was a sleeper? Whatever. I mean, it just, you know, just even on the Panther side, like, we have so many different things that we can we can go for. Quarterback is not at the option at all. I think the best case scenario, guys, best case scenario, check this out. Trey Lance falls to eight. Carolina picks him up. We go in the next year. Sam Brown is a quarterback, and he shows flashes. Okay, he has a, a a prime Kirk Cousins kind of year. The Panthers go nine and seven. We we look we look good. Sam Darnold looks like he has a career ahead of him. All right. And then some teams that's for quarterback the next offseason gives us a couple picks for him. We get a, we get a second, we get a second and a fourth for Sam Darnold or whatever. Um, and then we go into next year with Trey Lance, a 22 year old, 21 year old Trey Lance to go quarterback next year. Um, I think that's the best case scenario. I haven't been this excited for a draft since, you know, we had the number one overall pick back in like 2011. So, um, you know, whether we get a quarterback, whether we get, you know, BPA, um, whatever we do, uh, I'm just really excited about it. So. Uh, just, I just want to touch on that. I'm sure y'all going to – I got a little rest of the show to listen to, so I'm sure y'all going to touch on it. But keep trying to y'all. Enjoy it. Appreciate it. Man, we appreciate your call. Love, a lot man. of in- – yeah, a lot of interesting news when it comes to the draft. Let's keep going through. Hey, guys. Um, so I read an article today that um, kind of intrigued me a little bit. Uh, this is Tyler from that. Oh. We got cut uh, off. He, Next- yep, he, uh, he had a blue. He messaged me the other day. I forgot to tell you. He said he, right, he had got cutting off. Let's see if this is in, in part two. Hey, guys. This is Tyler from Roanoke, uh, Virginia. So I saw an article um, today in regards to Alejandro Villanueva, the left tackle from the Steelers, who is now a free agent. And I want to see your thoughts. Um, you know, by doing this, an article stated, you know, going after him would allow us to go BPA in the, uh, the draft, especially the first round. Um, he's 32, so the age is on the other side of 30. But, um, you know, PFF grades, 74s, 81, 75, 78 throughout the last few seasons, that's starter level. Um, really good pass protector. Run blocking, I would have read, is, you know, it's a struggle. But, you know, pass protecting is definitely a strength of his. Um, just throwing it out there, see what your thoughts are on that. Um, it was intriguing. Although, you know, if Pene Sewell or, you know, Slater is there, that's, you know, definitely tempting as well. But, don't know what the contract would be as far as the demand there, years, money. I'm sure he's looking at something, you know, something substantial there. But I don't know. It's going out there. See what you guys' thoughts were on that. Um, I'm sure it's a good topic to discuss. Keep pounding. My thoughts are this: is that if you get that top flight offensive tackle right there, we got to get him. What's interesting to me that has developed, CK, about the talk that I've been in these draft mock draft this and that yeah. is that all of a sudden. Once Sewell's gone, people are hesitating at eight to pick the Slater, right? Is that like I want us to pick the guy at eight who we is a surefire thing? Yeah, and that's the only thing that's a. Are they overthinking it? At this I think point? I think there's it's tough because I I know what we're looking for, but number one, 
First, I have a question. Do we know, has Okun actually signed anywhere else yet? No, and no, and he doesn't have to. You know why? Because Bitcoin is at sixty. Right. He made he made plenty of money. Yeah, at, like he is. He's not playing football anymore. That's what I think. Why would he? He's made he's tripled his money from last year at the very minimum. And when I wrote that story, or we tweeted it out, it was at twenty four thousand Bitcoin. Last time I checked, was at sixty six. I think it dropped down to 50 last I looked, but yeah, it's still because right, well, there's a big dip this last week. Tell us why. I hope you got out of that doge where you're at I the did, peak. I didn't get out at the peak. Um, I mm-hmm. did sell at 33 cent. Um, you know, which bad. is uh not, not it's bad. not bad, not mm-hmm. bad. So I've been I'm, you know, I was pretty happy about that. But um, you know, you wonder about Okung, you also wonder about you know, building a wave his age. Um but the problem is, is, you know, we're, we're talking about bringing back. I, I like the idea of being able to go BPA and having that offensive tackle that has started at the level that he has started at on a team that has been successful like the Steelers. Um, the issue is, is that, you know, I don't want to continue to build. Like, if we bring in so many of these one-year deals, we're literally just planning to rebuild again. Like it's it's hard to be able to draft yeah. the replacements for these guys every year. That's why year. you got to start drafting, right? Yeah, that's I right. mean, like that's where the, the draft yeah. deals. Yeah, and it's time to draft a guy. It's time to put the investment in. One other thing is is that uh, when you're uh, contacting Kevin Brown, Kevin Brown for your own energy fixed rate for life. You got to mention, I for, I failed. It's my first time doing this. And I'm going to be doing it for a long time. Uh, yeah, but you got to mention, said. you have to mention that you heard about a Volta from the C3 Panthers podcast. It will help us. Right? This is a non-paid. He's a, he's a, he's a member of the show, all of this. But it will help us if you say, hey. I saw this. I want to be clean energy. I want to be fixed rate for life. I want to make my life, my house worth more. And I heard that on the C3 Panthers podcast. That's what you got to tell Kevin Brown. All right, let's go to the next call. Hey, what's up, guys? It's uh, Chase Everett from High Point, North Carolina. What's up, Chase? uh, You know, it's probably a little off topic, uh, but, you know, I, 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 as a football player, I hate Teddy just as much as the next guy, next Panther fan. But one thing that I can commend him on is with all this, 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 I guess the same thing with Sam Darnold, with all this going on with trade talks. And then they actually, you know, like the, they were going to trade the eighth pick for Stafford to replace Teddy. They were going to sell the farm for Deshaun to replace Teddy. And then they ended up replacing Teddy with Darnold. He has not shown his ass once. Like Teddy has, he has taken this on the chin like a man. And I know it's probably easy to take it on the chin when you're getting paid what he's getting paid. But, you know, I, that's just, you know, it's just a thought that came into my head. And, uh, you know, I respect him for it. And, you know, I, if he goes to the Broncos or wherever he goes, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be pulling against him, you know, because, uh, you know, in my brain, it's once a Panther, always a Panther. You don't got to pull against him, bro. But, Anyways, Thanks for the call, right. man. Here, my question to you, CK, as yeah. he handled it with his supreme grace, is just silence grace? Is that what it? I mean, like, I guess he could have come out and said, "I hate," like, uh, like y'all are all doing, but we would all just made fun of him. What, what, yeah. you know? I mean, like, is, has he been graceful just by being silent? I think that's a little uh, generous in a bit. I mean, I think that, yeah, I mean, it's hard to to be able to understand, I mean, whether or not there is gracefulness. I mean, the I think grace would be um, not asking to have permission to go talk about trades elsewhere, you know, um, I, you know, that or or even the the stuff that's come out saying that he's, you know, possibly had a burner account and he's trolling people with that. I mean, I don't necessarily know that, you know, he's handling it gracefully. I think we also run into that same conversation where we can say, you know, um, 
uh, Aaron Rodgers, for instance, oh, he handled that gracefully because he didn't come out and just criticize the because when they when they you know drafted Jordan Love or um, anything. I mean, there's a lot, there's plenty of people out there, or even um, you know, uh, I mean, there, there's so many people out there, like even Cam Newton. I mean, he he came out after the fact and he was like he was hurt, but you know, he. Uh, I mean, he, I I don't know until we he's had an opportunity to speak to the media or have his own words be out there in the open. I, it's hard to say that he's taken it gracefully. We'll find out. Yeah, um, I mean, and on top of that, he could have been like he could have been coming out and been like a dick about it, and it turns out nobody paid attention to him. <laughs> yeah, right. right <laughs> I'm just yeah, kidding. I'm just kidding. Is that? Yeah, is that he has not come out and said the Panthers suck. Right. Like, I mean, I I guess what would be what would be being a dick in this moment equate to. And he has to be careful because he's trying to seek a new job in his own right. That's another thing. I don't know. I mean, like, what can he really do? I th- I think that uh, he has to take his lumps, but that's where mm-hmm. I'm at. Next call, 252-228-1598. What it do, my boys? You know who it is. Your boy, Mike. A.K.A. Supreme Alicia. What is going on, my guys? Hope y'all are doing well. Uh, I'm making my way uh, to work as we speak. So, you know, I had to shout out to my boys, everybody out there. Good old Panther Nation. Love you, boys. Um, uh, it's, I'm, I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm so excited. Draft's almost here. I'm ready because I've been tired of hearing all this bullshit about who we going to pick and this, that, and the third. It's just going to be what it is that Thursday night. It is what it is and throughout that weekend. So I am ready. Also, I'm ready for that big uh, C3 Panther meetup at the Patriots game, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I haven't forgot. I am so fucking down. To hang out with you boys, spend the night out in Charlotte. I'll get a hotel room because I'm going to get busted. Not too busted. <laughs> I don't want to get blackout busted, but I want to get busted with you guys. It'd be so, so cool to meet up with all you guys, all the Panther Nation. Um, hey, uh, um, nickname for uh, Sam Darnold. Uh, I saw it. Uh, it was a video. Just do, uh, just do. Hey, Darnold, football head. We call him football head because he he kind of has a football head. Um, yeah, guys. Um, save the date, everybody. You know, Patriots game whenever they schedule it. I am down. Hopefully, we can all get a ticket. You guys hold it down. Keep pounding, Panther pride till I die. Peace. Let's go. Let's go. That was uh that was a lot about the uh Patriots Panthers game uh and us doing the C three meetup. Uh he is uh he is highly thrilled with that idea and he is ready just to I think he's gonna roofie you if I had to guess based on that. We gotta do it. I mean like that's the only um, we're at the point of the season where we're identifying singular game or actually we're at the point of COVID life. Where we can start thinking about that, yeah. And one game. You know, in the past, we'd be talking about going to two or three games or doing something like this. Now we just want to do one and go to it. Wouldn't it be nice if we could go to one game all together? Don't worry. We can get the tickets. We'll figure We will figure uh, where there's a will, there's a way. And we're all wearing our Cam Newton jerseys. That's what, I, well, that's what I'm doing. All right. 252-228-1598. What's going on, C3 Nation? It's your boy, Jay Anderson. Hitting y'all up. Man, it's easy for me to go ahead and, and get on um, Tepper and all the, you know, Sam Donna. I don't, you know, but I'll wait to to rank, I wait to see what what you know what the draft gonna bring and everything. So, but I want to talk about the um yesterday that I saw the Bengals got their new uniform and stuff like that, 
And I'm just thinking, like, man, Panthers ain't had a uniform since they came in. You know, I had new uniforms since they came in 96. I think we probably, you know, along with Green Bay, you know, the Steelers, Ravens, you know, Raiders and Chiefs, we probably had the longest, you know, ring of, of the same jerseys and stuff like that, of the same uniforms like that. And I just think that Carolina, you know, Carolina needs to change up. It's, you know, I think it's time to change new up. New regime, I, everything. You yeah. know, I posted up some New Jersey's. You see it on Twitter and under J, um, at J Tisdale at J Tisdale five on Twitter. You can see New Jersey. I posted up. You know, but what y'all think? Do y'all think um Pants need um need some new unis and how they should look, man? All right, B. But That's a tough damn one. Right, we need some new unis. But we like, have we some of the best black. looking uniforms in the league already, bro. Like we we need black on black on black, and that's I mean, where I do they, like the black if they're changing like the numbers. Out. If they're changing all the numbers on the jerseys and this and that, this is the the NFL has got to change one rule, man. That there can only be one helmet. That's the problem. Yeah. If they could have two different colored helmets, if they can have a black helmet and a silver helmet, and then they can wear this one with this and this one with the other seven, that's the thing. We need to be able to have a black helmet and a silver helmet. Yeah. And like, that's the one thing holding back all the jersey. I don't care about any of that. If we could go black pants, black jersey, and black helmet one day on a Thursday night or something like that, and then lose by 70... That would be what happens to the Panthers. We always lose when we wearing this black on black joints, even though they are hot as shit. Put give us one of those the Joe Bello. Go follow that Joe Bello homie on Twitter. Who's the he just like draws Panther people out of and he's like the most amazing artist. And this is a stupid ass drawing Panthers people. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Like, why is he? Draw- I don't even understand. Like, he's the most talented artist in the world, and he's like, I'm gonna draw a picture of Luke Keekley. Fine, I love it. I love it. But still, let him design that helmet. A, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like I said, if that, if that's the case, I, I don't hate the idea. I just worry that we would somehow just get some of the most ugly uniforms and. I mean, we've seen these new uniform reveals go wrong, and it's just, I don't want to be the laughing stock of the league because we went with a uniform choice that nobody thinks is actually looking good. But nah, Yeah, we don't even need a change in the uniform. We just need a black helmet. Yeah, I mean, that that I would agree with. I think if we could do the blackout um, and, and have that be uh, a home outfit, then I would like that. Uh, um, I don't hate the blue, so but blue isn't my favorite, but I'm definitely not sold on the white unis. It makes like, me feel like we're doing that color rush joint. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the Jags did that. Our, I, we actually have the best color rush color. Yeah. Like, our color rush color is legit. It is yeah. bright and awesome. Now, I think they just got to give us more options on the helmets. Yeah, and then you can do those uniform changes. You can do color change. You can do all that. And guess what? It doesn't matter. I don't know why they're so. I guess they're so interested in preserving the original brands. Like they're a little bit behind. I won't say behind. That might not be the right word. But they don't want to deviate from the brand. Brand. Is brand. it the same? Do you think it's the same level of? the you know washington football team before they made their decision to change the name i mean it took them forever and they were holding on to that forever it's different as this is that like we the one thing i would say is that maybe they are right on this is by just sticking on brand as in color combo yeah like no deviation it's like what if pepsi tried to flip like for a couple of months do a different color combo yeah you yeah, know, it just went, like it's just you just stick with the same thing and just do it. All right, I mean, it 252. Works. Yeah, 252 228 5098. Hey, this is Kevin from Charleston. <clears throat> so, I was wondering, are we really going to take a receiver in the first round? Like, no, you know, I mean, well, I get it, you lost Curtis Samuel, pits. and you never know, but uh, I, I just want to tackle. 
Yeah, yeah I, it, that, those are the only and options on this draft right now. Also, I've been thinking. I know it's not going to happen. And it probably never. There's no chance of it happening. What are the odds like Justin Seal falls to us at eight or another quarterback, and we draft him, and then you use Sam Darnold as a way to trade back into the first round with like another pick or another player for someone else in the first round? Let me get your thoughts. Peace. Hmm. You know, I don't know how to deal. You know, one thing I'm going to say this about CK is that I I kind of am interested in the trading up in the second round, third, first, you know, like, yeah, as I would rather have three picks than I truly believed in them. Five picks where three of them were tenable, tentative, it, yeah. excuse me, tentative and two I believed in. So that is the only thing I'm going to advocate for kind of the move up. Like I, w- yeah. I will combine our second and our third to go into the first or the second. I'm okay with that. But in the past, we have not done well with that. Devin Funches, Rashawn Golden, we talked about earlier. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I think uh, I, I, I actually like the idea of keeping where we're at and then trading up from maybe the third round into the second or the second round into the first. Um, or if there were an, uh, a suitor uh, behind us trading into the eighth pick, not going too far back in the draft, but taking maybe an early two or a, a late one on top of whatever you know one they would have. I mean, yeah, I, I like the idea of having more talent options that are available than just kind of throwing you know uh, spaghetti against the wall and hoping something sticks. You know, it just uh, it's right. really tough. tough yes. um, yeah. Exactly. Way to do the That's draft. The exact analogy I was looking for. Yeah. So, but they, I mean, I, I, as far as you know, being able to take a wide receiver, I think there is no shot. Like, there is no shot we're taking a wide receiver. Um, well, we Kyle have, is a wide receiver. They just call him a tight end. Yeah. Well, he's much more than just a base wide receiver. And even if yeah. he is a wide receiver, even if we use him that way. It's been so long since we've had a true wide receiver that has that type of a mind, like that type of a body, that we're able to actually utilize him in in you know those one on one ball. Like we have nobody that we're going to throw the ball da- da- ball to down deep down the field and say, "Oh, this guy has a chance to get this hell Mary." We don't have anybody. You know, you could sit there and say we have DJ Moore right. and Robbie Anderson. Robbie. They're not jumping Maybe over top Robbie. of these safeties to get that. You're right. I you know, like and so I, I mean. I like I, I, I like, I like that. It. I like that. But the other part is the question he had, do we think that there's a shot that Fields drops to us? I don't think there's a shot that he drops to us. Um, but even if he did, it's such a hard decision to make to go from like literally everything in our media has been about Sam Darnold. Like they're doing everything that they haven't done with Teddy Bridgewater um, with the Southern foods and, you know, I mean, they, they they wouldn't be putting that green light on that unless they had intentions. I would like to assume they are like really upselling what Sam Darnold is to our, our fan base. And so I, I think they really do believe in him and they're moving forward as though he is the guy. But if the only reason they decided to trade for him is because Justin Fields wasn't going to be available at, at the eight. That'd be really hard for them to walk away from that. But I, agree. I, I, I don't know. I agree. All right. Uh, next call. Hey, guys. This is Chuck from Louisville City calling. What's up, uh, Chuck? Looking at a nice topic. You know, several teams interested in trading up. Uh, I think it's safe to say unless someone knocks her socks off and is willing to throw, like, you know, two first-round picks, a second-round pick, a player to be named later, uh, the smart thing would be to hang on to that draft pick. Um, you know, we've really got to wait and see, and everybody knows. I mean, it's, we can speculate all we want to. We've got to wait to see how the draft falls. And anybody can say right now without a shadow of doubt, oh, yeah, we're trading down, we're trading down. Um, there's a small possibility we could trade up the number five, six, or seven. If the situation was to fall right, if the right person was there and we found out that, that we didn't have to give up as much draft capital as we once thought we'd have to, just never know. 
Um, I don't think that'll be the situation, but it could be. But you guys can't sit here and tell me that we're definitely going to trade down if we're sitting there at number eight and Panay Sewell or even Justin Fields is on the board. Um, I just don't see that happening. Yeah. I think we would run to the podium with either one. It takes us in two different directions. Um, but I do believe, uh, yeah, Justin Fields is on the board. I think we take him and we'll just let the offensive line, you will probably draft heavy from there. Um, and the dream scenario to me, Panay Sewell file falls and we get him at number eight. And, um, we just kind of fill out the roster and, and hopefully Sam Donald can develop with him and, and we'll be okay. Now, in the situation where Slater falls there, I would take Slater at eight, but not everybody sold on Slater. And if he is gone and Pitts is gone and we're looking at the first corner off the board or taking Parsons, the linebacker from Penn State, or taking the best wide receiver in the draft, and that's a 50-50 call. And uh, it might play as well to that time to trade down to number 12 or to trade down to number 13 or, or 10 or whatever, pick up another second-round pick. Maybe we'd pick up more. Uh, I don't think we need to trade out too far. I don't like the idea of trading back to 19 to Washington. They'd have to give us a lot more than the 19th pick uh, and a second rounder. It'd have to be more than that. Um, if they want to give us next year's first and a second this year and the 19th pick, then, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I really don't even like the idea of trading with New England just because I think it's time the whole league sticks Bill Belichick one time. But anything else is on the board from, from pick like 13 on up. To... All right, so when we're, when we're talking about this, is trade up, trade down, Sam Pat, right? Is there's a, a couple of things that are – and this is, look, is I – this is where we need – Cody, to be honest, because I'm not overly yeah. interested in this. But it's what are you losing if you move back from eight to fifteen? That's the real thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, is there is a you you're gaining a pick, you're gaining whatever whatever you gain, but what are you losing by moving from eight to fifteen? Is one question. And then the other question is, is what are these guys giving? Because is are we moving back to 15 for a second? Are we moving back to 15 for a first, right? Those are all the tough parts of entertaining trade back. And I'm just ultimately interested in what do you lose when you move back from 8, eight to 13? And I'm very no, where, surprised. Where is where Washington? Offer- They're what? Washington's... Hot, 19, like, 19? Yeah, 19 or maybe I'm, I'm very interested in this. Um, the draft heads kind of backing off of Slater a bit and saying like, you should draft horn. You should draft like this and that. I was thinking that if we're at eight, why aren't we getting Sewell or Slater period and just keep it simple. So we yeah, Washington is at 19. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, that's, I mean, it's a good question. I mean, when you, uh, what are you going to get, what are you going to get by moving back? Right. It's like, theoretically, it sounds awesome. I mean, you're moving right? back. Are 11 you giving points. us two seconds? Are you giving us a let first me, and a second? Like, what are you really doing? That's the hard part. Let me ask you. Assessing moving back. In, in the history of your recall, you know, your recollection, of the Panthers. How many times have we hit on a draft pick? And I know that's hard because we have a new GM, but how many draft picks after, like if we're picking in the bottom half of the draft have actually worked out as being like what you would hope they would be at a number one pick. I mean, in the first round. So you're saying like back in first rounders versus yeah. front end first rounders. So let's 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 kind of right, count well, out I can what we're tell talking you the about. Ones off the top of my head, right, right. away. Kevin Benjamin bust. <laughs> Kevin Benjamin terrible. Um, Shaq Thompson mediocre bust. I would say bust at twenty five. Like didn't live up. Fernan uh, Butler, Butler is another yeah. one. Didn't live up. Now. 
So those are in the twenties. In the sixteens, you got be, like uh, to be fair, DJ Moore, DJ Brian Moore, Burns. yeah. So DJ I mean, Moore, Brian Burns in the sixteen range, we have hit pretty well. And but in, in fairness, uh, I won't say in fairness, Brian Burns like that. The the Raiders selected Cleveland, Keelan for Cleveland Farrell at like yeah. three. Yeah. So maybe they're just idiots. Well, I mean, the, that's Brian I'm, Burns that's, at 16 and then eight. Here you go to eight. Like they're kind of the top 10 pick, right? I just, the top 10 pick yeah. has been McCaffrey. The top 10 pick has been who else have we picked in the top 10? Uh, um, Derek Brown. Cam Newton, Derek, Derek Brown. Brown. Um, yeah. I mean, a Luke. Yeah, what was Luke? He was like, uh, he was. We have not had luck in the twenties. If that's your point, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like drafting on the bottom half of the draft is going to be a, a crapshoot. Um, we've had a very good, a very good history when we draft in the top fifteen, and and that is giving us like Peppers, giving us Jordan Gross, giving us. Players blue like, chip. yeah, I mean, and, and we chip. don't have a cr- incredible DJ Moore is literally the only one I can personally think about in the DJ first Moore, round. No, DJ turned, Moore was 24th and Tranks told me. Yeah, I that's what been, was yeah. he really that? Yeah, he was because I remember we were, it was the year after we went, we lost to uh, the Saints. It was 2017, that draft. Um, and I remember because right after us, we like, we were in there waiting for this to take place and we knew we needed a wide receiver we had no one period on our on our team for a wide receiver and so we knew we needed somebody um other than you know curtis amo which we at that point in time didn't know what he really was we had nobody as a wide receiver and we were sitting there thinking there is no way that no wide receiver comes off the board before 25 and not a we got the first wide receiver off the board with right. DJ Moore. It we could have been him Ridley, right? Yeah, exactly. And so that worked out pretty well. But that also was simply that if you want to be, you know, look at it from that perspective, it was lucky that we got him at 25 because odds, like in my mind, I thought Ridley and DJ Moore were both off of the board by the time they got to 25. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, <clears throat> DJ Moore has turned out to be great. R- Ridley. Has been, I think he's been, he's, very, he's been good. He's been good. Strong start. He's been a touchdown a machine start. over there. But again, I think you, when you have a Julio Jones on the other side of the field taking up a lot of attention, it makes your job a hell of a lot easier, especially when you have a quarterback that can actually get the ball to you down the field like Matt Ryan can. All right. Let's go to the next call. Uh, oh, man. Please let me come in. I'm a huge fan of y'all's podcast. I just want to. Get in and talk to Panthers. Keep pounding. Well, well, thank you for that call right there. Be there uh, for the draft party. Yeah, be there for the I draft know. party. All right. Well, look, is that uh, those are all the calls I got. The number is 252-228-5098. The cat calls line is open all the time. And right now, I'm going to say it's powered by Volta. And you can contact Kevin Brown if you want to cut the cord when it comes to your electric bill, fixed rate for life. Get equity in your house. Um, you can get to uh, like tax benefits, local and state, for switching to solar. And uh, and inc- uh, how about that? Is like you're doing the the planet a better a solid. So mm-hmm. thank you, Kevin Brown, a listener of the show, uh, for being a part of the show. And uh, thank you for the callers two five two 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 eight fifty ninety eight. Please smash the thumbs up, like. Subscribe. Let's grow this podcast. And as CK was talking about, we have the draft show coming up in about a week and a half. This Thursday, just two days from now, we'll mark one week from the NFL draft. On April 29th, we'll congregate together. We'll watch it together. We'll see what the Carolina Panthers do. Do they trade back? And I got to say, CK, is that if we're talking about a... um a draft show and what we want to see from that draft show. I'm okay with us picking a player at eight. I'm okay with us um, trading up and making some noise. I'm okay with us picking a quarterback. I'm okay with us trading back as long as we get a first round pick. But 
The worst possible thing would be is the Panthers trade out of eight. We get no first round pick and we get like two next year or some stupid mess like that yeah. or three seconds. We can't have them ruin the draft party like that. We're going to have a, this will be since 2014, we've been getting together and watching the first round of the draft. We commentate, we bring in player, we bring in analysts, we bring in fans to talk about what's going down. The Carolina Panthers are slated at eight on April 29th on Thursday. Can you be there with us, my man, CK? Uh, yeah, I'll definitely be there, my man. Yes. yes. You know that. Love it. Love it. All right. So uh, we've done Chuck the chat one calls. Call. What's that? Chuck said he had uh, one more call. Oh, my he got God. cut off. Oh, I got to go through the calls again. Tell, all right. Chuck. Tell me what your last four are. He's got it in there. He's already got it in there. Did he, what are you? Read them off to me as I'm Zero nine eight one. Let's see. Yeah, guys. It's Chuck from Louisville City College again. We're going to hit the draft uh, next Thursday, and that's going to be the talk of the day. Who we drafted? Is it Slater? Is it Sewell? Did we get Fields? Did we trade down? Um. And that's going to be the biggest thing. But let me turn your attention today, too, on Friday, the second and third round. To me, that's going to be the meat and potatoes of the draft. That's where Federer is going to make us money. That's where this team is going to be built. This is where we're going to win or lose the draft. If we can acquire a second or third rounder and have two picks, two in the second or two in the third and plus the second and third, if we can come away on day two with three picks and we can get us a corner, get us a good guard, and, and either maybe pick up a safety or, or who knows, maybe another line or whatever it may be, if we can come away with three picks instead of two on that second day. And depending on the players we get, that's going to be the trail where we turn down and this organization starts turning around and we start building the winner. Um, I've got some ideas of guys I want between my nerves and Cleveland in the third. Um, Sante Samuel in the second, if we don't pick a left tackle in the first. Uh, Dylan Riddens in the second. Who knows? But I definitely think the second and third round on the second night of draft that Friday night will be where we make our money. All right, well, Chuck, that like, I mean, look, this is the tra- the draft talk that will happen and will not happen, right? That's the thing is that as the draft happens, gosh, there's going to be so much that unfolds. It's going to be fun draft night. You got to be part of the C three. And look, yeah. Chuck, you got to come on. You got to call in. You got to jump in. Actually, we'll bring you on the stream yard. Like we're gonna we're gonna cycle some people in. We're gonna give some surprise links out to fans. We're gonna do some stuff like that. We also have in Discord. If you go to uh, my Twitter handle or in the YouTube chat here. You can go to our Discord channel, and then I'm pretty sure from there you can easily find the draft contest Discord link. But what you need to do is this. If you submit your top 10 picks to us, that means you're going to select them. And the, like here, there's two ways we're going to be judging the contest and giving out some prizes on draft nights. That's one re- this is only one way we're going to be giving out prizes for other different things. Cause I got a closet full of t-shirts that I will give away. But what I want you to do is send me your top 10 draft picks in order, right? So no trades. We're not doing trades. It's just the players, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You put your 10 players in their order. They're going to get two points when it, or like something like this. It'll be like two points if you get the pick and the player. So third, the third pick, and you got this. It's going to be two, but you get one point. If you didn't get the order right, but you got the player right. All right. So you're going to give us our top 10 in the order you believe, but even you don't have to have a perfect order. We're going to give the the most points out that collected it. We're going to give some prizes, some different things like that. 
So you can submit that uh, on the Discord chat. You can uh, submit it via email, carolinacatchronicles at gmail.com. We'll be here on Thursday night when it comes to the draft, bringing in people live reacting for a party, man. Like, we've been doing this. Look, I know people do live reaction videos and this and that on the Internet, but we've been doing this since 2014, man. Yep. Like, that's a big deal when if you think about the what the Internet is at this moment. Live broadcasting in 2014 was so brand new, and we've been trying to do this. And, look, we're just fans hanging out. So we would appreciate your support. What you do is this is on Thursday of the draft. All you got to do is turn on your television. I suggest muting it. But then you turn on YouTube, you turn on Facebook, you turn on Periscope, and you check out the C3 Panthers podcast. You can call into the show at 252-228-5098. You can smash the thumbs up button. And you can jump in this chat room right now and tell us who you want us to draft. But I think that's about all I got to talk about. We still have some ice up picks to do. Yeah, yeah. And for ice those up. that are interested in coming into the show, um, the draft show is the beginning of Cody's tenure on the C3. And yeah. it was also one of my first appearances on C3 in a live fashion. So I, uh, I'm not trying to tell you guys you're going to be able to get on the C3 Panthers podcast. as like, Permanent AK selling his spot. He's but, like, I will sell my spot. No, no, but you guys, <laughs> hey, listen, we might get somebody. You guys come on, you bring the fire, you bring the heat. You know, you might have some regular spots available, you know, for when somebody yeah. might need to tap out for a night. True that. That's a great point. All right. Let's go to uh, the cat calls. The final segment of the show is where we tell someone to ice up, toughen up to get it together in our homage to Steve Smith. Um, the ice up picks are this is that everyone is fair game kids from a, uh, Oklahoma that are eight years old to, uh, your mama to everybody. My ice up pick, I'm going to extend it. This is that it's going to be an odd one is that as, um, uh, well, one is that everybody has to ice up the Oakland Raider or the Los Angeles Raiders for the breathe and that like I can breathe tweet did you see that no what'd they do oh so everybody's putting out you know the george floyd the guy yeah. the 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 uh, george floyd is the person that was dead they could the i don't know the police officer's name but minneapolis yeah, they Chauvin, so he's, he's, he's he's guilty for murder and this and that and then all these people are putting out these tweets that are like, I can, br- I can't breathe. I can, br- whatever. And it's 420. I, I do think it's weird because every time I see 420, I just think of one thing. You know what I'm saying? So like, it doesn't yeah. matter how serious it is. It's like, Oh God, it's on 420. I can't yeah. be serious. But uh, <laughs> I think the Raiders put up a tweet that says I can breathe. And. I don't know if like what what are they like they're like we can breathe that there was a verdict or they got it wrong. Is so it to them that's a clear ice up, I think. Like they got it. It was just, they just odd. is it just was it just uh poor taste? Did they just maybe not hit the mark? Were they trying to be supportive and, and maybe just did it in the wrong way? I don't know. Or they forgot the apostrophe. Well, like I mean, yeah. like it's like were they trying to say I can't? Was it a breathe, mistype? Like, yeah, was it a mistype? Right? I, don't yeah, know. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting. But my real so I don't I don't know enough of that story to go overly in the ice up, but I saw some people talking about that. The other one is same storyline, the continued reaction to George Floyd and this verdict. And Nancy Pelosi comes out. And let me see if I can get this real quick. It might be worth hearing it. Uh, so Nancy Pelosi comes out and look, is Nancy Pelosi is like a billion years old at this point. That's the problem here. Is that so she's trying to be a polit let me see. Okay, I'll let you all hear it. Let's see, this is it. If you can hear this, hopefully. For sacrificing your thank, thank you. Jesus. Can you hear that? Thank yeah, I can hear. Lord. For sacrificing right. your life. All right, let me start it over again. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Sharon. I already hear it, and it's the worst thing I've already heard. Sacrificing your life for justice. Thank you. For being George. there to call out to your mom. How how heartbreaking was that? Call out for your mom. I can't breathe, but because of you, and because of thousands, millions of people around the world who came out for justice, your name will always be synonymous with justice. And now we have to make sure justice prevails in the sentencing, but that's, you know, that's, that's its own procedure. Thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice, for being wow. there to well, that is the mom. most insensitive I'll, I'll statement I've ever heard. Right, so here's the thing is that, yes, is that first she's old as she's old, yeah. right? That's the one thing. The, you're right. I mean, look, is I'm not uh, the one thing I, I want to uh, kind of just put this one little bug in people's ear. Nancy Pelosi is Catholic. And we just came off of the Easter holiday. She's super old. She's been like, you know, this warrior for whatever people and this and that. The sacrificing your life for this, this and that. They're very Christian themish in a way. Like, thank you for your sac. Like, I mean, that is yeah. and it almost like she was just like. I just came off of Easter Sunday and I just replaced Jesus and George Floyd. <laughs> like that's what that's be. And I'm not yeah. trying to forgive her for that, but I feel like that uh, now that kind of um, rhetoric or that uh, description is a little sacrificial lamb type yeah, stuff like right there. Like, thank like you, Jesus for going on the cross and dying for us. And it doesn't sound good when your mother, Mary, well, and someone's saying thank you for that. It's it's like saying thank you for sacrifice. Like he made the choice to have that happen. Right, right. Like, that's, that's where it is. I just think there's a Christian background that she doesn't know. It's like a subconscious argument she yeah. is. The language uh, she is using is Christian language. Yeah, I mean, you could tell but, that there was. I mean, the yeah, there's is, some themes in that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's yeah. It just it, she's it, it, old. That's the thing. These mugs are old as hell. She's like 75. Probably. Oh, my gosh. How well, old is she? What, do you have a nice up pick while I Google? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, so we've we've had plenty of people that we've. She's 81. You know, oh, my goodness. <laughs> she's 81. How are y'all even going to be mad at her? Like, she's still going to work and she's 81. Y'all she shouldn't be going to now. work. There should be term limits on the guy on that stuff, but anyway, um, nonetheless, uh, that that's it, it, her her stating that those things is exactly why term lim limits need to apply to people because there is only so long you can do a job before you stop caring about the passion for the job and all about what you can get from it. Like it's it's just the reality of a job, man. I mean, it's uh, uh, maybe that's just me being a bit naive and 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 maybe or maybe not naive, but maybe being uh, overly critical about people's positions. But anyway, um, yeah. So we've made plenty of uh, frustration, uh, or not for us. We made plenty of uh, of uh, of less than ideal opinions about people uh, in football that have decided that they're going to stop eating meat. Like Devin Funches was a salad boy, yep, you know, yep. Cam Newton decided to go vegan and all he did was get hurt. So I'm going to ice up somebody that decided to become a vegetarian. Me. <laughs> I've, I've decided I'm going to be a are vegetarian. You really? Yeah. Have and you done it yet? Are you, yeah, are yeah, you I haven't just eaten, deciding? I haven't eaten meat. I mean, it's, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm full on vegetarian because I haven't, like had a like a full How week long? of it, but I'm. Have it's been about more than three days. Yeah, it's been since Saturday. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I am. Uh, what and it has? It, what did you get? Like your cholesterol rating, and they were like, no. I mean, none of those things are super concerning. Um, you know, right now with the type of stuff that I do, I'm already in a pretty sedimentary lifestyle because of I literally work from my computer all day. I stream for an additional four hours. Uh, and then obviously sleep for eight hours that didn't leave a lot of time for me to spend time with my family and then also try to find a way to get exercise in. So number one, I want to make sure I'm more cautious from a health perspective. 
But, um, you know, I just, I'd been thinking about it for a while. I've talked to so many people that have made that decision and their lives just took a leap forward in a positive way from feeling better to, you know, just feeling like they were just happier. Um, and, uh, it's hard because I do enjoy eating, uh, uh, eating, you know, burgers and steaks and all that stuff. But, um, you know, from a moral standpoint, it's always like, it's, it's tough to sit there and think I've never been somebody, like, if I go fishing, I got, I, I don't go fishing because I can't even fathom killing a fish. Right. Um, like oh, it's come on. like it. Come listen, on. I know it sounds like a pansy thing to say, but like step on bugs, like no problem, man. Oh, bugs are yeah. Well, uh, I have I've, I have now. been known to I, I have been known to throw man. some bugs outside and sell to kill them. But nonetheless, like I'm not trying to be like super snowflake what on that. What are you gonna eat? What do you eat instead of like? Are you eating a lot of eggs? Are you eating eggs? Uh, tomorrow morning, nine a.m. Joanne said. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but <laughs> oh, that's my mom. Nah, mom, no, I got uh, like, no, I have to work <laughs> if it was but, uh, eight. But yeah, I do. Uh, I, you know, right now, uh, we've, we went to the grocery store. We've just gotten a lot of vegetables. Um, you know, I'm, I, I was thinking about going full vegan and taking dairy and cheese out, but you can't do that, man. You need some protein, dude. You gotta get that cheese. I'd be eating eggs, bro. Eat them eggs in the so, morning, man. Yeah, eggs, but uh, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know if you've ever tried. My son has a peanut allergy, so I'm not using anything with peanut butter. Mm. Um, but I have. I don't know if you ever tried it. It's even if you don't have a peanut butter allergy, like sun butter is actually pretty good. Like it's basically sunflower seeds that are, you know, they use to make peanut butter with it. Um, but uh, check that out. Uh, but um, we've been eating some of that. I've been getting, you know, my, all the snacks that I'm getting. I'm eating like grapes, which are fruity and all that stuff. And then I'm doing an intermittent intermittent fa- fasting to where I don't eat between um, 10 p.m. and 2 uh, p.m. Yeah, so for I only eat for eight hours a day. Um, and uh, so going about it that yeah, way. I'm going to clap about that. So ice up to people who make fun of vegetarians. No, ma- and- I was I'm icing myself up because I've made the decision, even though I've made fun of those people who've made the decision to do that. Um so, Dude, get uh, healthy. Look, I've been ex. Look, I've lost thirteen pounds in the last three months. But it's taking this is is a cut back on for me. I have not gone the vegetarian route. What I yep. did is cut the starches as much as possible. Like cut the bread, cut the mm-hmm. rice, cut the pasta. Don't have that at all anymore. If I eat a burger, I take the bun off this and that. But then ultimately. Like it's both. You got to exercise and eat. But yep. seventy-five. Good news for you, though, is seventy-five percent of hell of your weight is, is your really diet. about what you put in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And is the that pandemic has made it all this. too easy to not eat healthy. Like it has made it. The, you know. Oh man. Well, it's I'm remarkably gonna... difficult to eat healthy in a with money and expediency. Yeah, it's crazy. Like it's insane to like it's boring. Number one, number two, like is like you're driving all around to eat the same crap. So you got to eat at home a lot. That's all you're gonna do. You're gonna be cooking a lot. You got to meal save some money. A lot. Save you know? some money. I'll tell you. So good luck Go from to you that. and ice up to you for uh, making fun of vegetarians. You vegetarian. Yeah, son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. Uh, That's the C3 Panthers podcast. The number is 252-228-5098. can follow me on Twitter at cat underscore chronicles. Every Tuesday night, we chop up the latest Panthers news and opinions from the fan perspective. My name's Tony Dunn. You call me the professor if you want. My mom is in the chat room. Man, mama, I got to work tomorrow. I'm sorry. My mom's having a mass said for me. Thank you. I love you for that. My father, son, Holy Spirit. Now my pastor, too. Code Dizzle, Alan, the master of all streams. I saw you had a St. Jude stream the other day. I tried to donate. I was actually out and about on my phone. I did not even get to listen to the stream. I just was reading the captions, I think, and then hit some stars twice. I wish I would have given you more stars in a consolidated manner. Anyway, I love St. Jude's Help the Children, and tell us how they can find your work on Facebook or wherever you at. 
Yeah, you can uh, you can find me on Facebook.gg or FB.gg, uh, Code Dizzle Allen, right down there at the bottom of your screen, Code Dizzle underscore Allen. Um, you can find me on all social media platforms. Go follow me on Twitter, follow me on TikTok. Um, I'm actually going to need uh, some help, man. I want to try to get this growth going. Uh, things, uh, you know, I'd like to start seeing things move in a, in a more rapid fashion. And, you know, I think right now my, my main thing is I want to keep, you know, um, what I'm doing here is a part of my growth. So I want to make this whole big community be all a part of the same thing. So, um, you know, I, I want you guys to be a part of my growth. I want to continue to be a part of this growth. Um, and, uh, you guys have been showing up and showing out. We have the regulars, but we've got a lot of new people that have just continued to show up and I appreciate every one of you guys. So thank you so much. Jump in there, folks. And I tell you this is that we've been podcasting since 2013 on this Panthers. And all I ask for is a share. That's it. As you see people, you see Cody over there streaming every night, working out. You got all these mugs starting their own businesses. My boy, Deshaun take take off fitness and they putting all this stuff up. What is the hard part as you scroll by to hit the share, to hit the like, and to turn it on to some people that might be enjoy that content? That's all we ask from you. Is I mean, and look, if you want to give and this and that, I'm not even back. I don't want money. I want this. Is I want you to build the community with us by exposing people to the podcast, and that's it. Like, give us that. Yeah, Cheers. the donations are fantastic. Like don't get us wrong. The donations are great, but they're cool. They're, they're cool. Like we don't expect it from anybody, but what is super helpful to actually allow us to continue to try to grow this and actually make this thing, you know, become a monetary value that we can continue to make this production better. As you see, we've we've used the 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 things that you guys have donated, the monetization that we've gotten from anything else, we've put that into the uh the the production value you guys see here. So, and a lot of that isn't necessarily you guys donating. A lot of that is just right. you guys being uh, being able to say, "Hey, listen, you're part of the numbers that we're able to produce to people and show. Hey, listen, this is what we're able to do to where we're getting Keith Brown reaching out and saying, "Hey, listen, I'd like to be a part of this and partner up with you guys." So, you guys being here does more than you know. Eighty five thumbs up should be eighty five shares. That's it, man. And on top of that, we appreciate you. No matter what, we'll be back. Next Tuesday, don't forget the draft show's coming up. Until then, keep pounding. Keep pounding.